Sunday night football in New Orleans. Aaron Brooks and the Saints. They beat the team with the best record and the best defense. Warren Sapp of the Bucks earlier this year. Playoff atmosphere in the Big East. Hey, welcome to the Big Easy. The Big Easy. New Orleans. It's the black and gold. Booyah. It's all about the offense, baby. Into the end zone, Joe Horn, leaping crowd with a touchdown. Putting points on the board. Our back's against the wall right now. We got to make a statement against Tampa. Two, three, four. Fluffy cloud, pretty fluffy cloud. Cotton candy in the sky. Fluffy cloud, I cannot touch you, but you touch me. But we're fast, we're physical, we tackle. Ain't nothing easy in the Big East. This is big, and this is easy. For a big game in the Big Easy, we have 68,000 plus in a sold-out Superdome, hoping the Saints can sweep the Bucks and get back in the race for the division title. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. The Bucks defense has all the numbers. They lead the league in interceptions. They lead the league in sacks, yards allowed, points allowed. In short, this could be one of the best defensive units ever. Their offense has been efficient, and it's getting better. That's why they're 9-2, and two, the best record in the National Football League. But one of those losses came against the Saints. New Orleans' high-powered offense handled the Bucks that day. In fact, Deuce McAllister rushed for 100 and nine yards and if they're going to break a two-game losing streak joe they're going to need exactly that same kind of big offensive performance well mike deuce may not have to get 109 tonight but he's going to have to do a heck of a job and get pretty close to it to take the pressure off of aaron brooks jim Haslett went out and made a bold move when he traded ricky williams to the miami dolphins and decided to put the ball in the hands of deuce McAllister, and he's delivered six 100 plus yard rushing games and then he goes out and he leads the conference coming into this weekend with 950 yards. He's got to be a big part and take the pressure off of Aaron Brooks. Aaron has tried to do a lot in the last couple of games, but he's managing tonight to be able to go out and spread the ball around. You can't be conservative against a defense that is this good. You're going to have to put points on the board, but heaven only knows, Paul, if you're the New Orleans Saints, how do you go about attacking a defense like this and putting points on the board when they're that good? Well, New Orleans proved, uh, Tampa Bay proved how good they were against Green Bay last week, Joe. Unfortunately, Warren Sapp didn't get a chance to celebrate. Why? Because he made a great block that he had to explain all week. And the confrontation that he had with Mike Sherman, the head football coach of Green Bay after the game. But he said, tonight, I will celebrate against this New Orleans team. If you ever watched him play, there are very few guys that play with his intensity and his passion. When we ask him about other defenses, he says, great defenses have a motor. The New York Giants held, had LT. The uh, Baltimore Ravens, they have Ray Lewis. He says, here in Tampa, it's me. I'm the motor. He said, I'm also the mouth. And tonight against New Orleans, you're going to see the mouth and the motor humming. All right, thank you, Paul. Today is December 1st, the beginning of the NFL stretch run when championships are won and lost. Tonight, two contenders face off in New Orleans. We got to take care of our turf. Our offense got to smack him in the mouth. He's going all the way. Can you believe it? We want to make it physical every single snap. This is big. This is easy. Boom. Welcome back. 
to the Superdome for the Bucks and the Saints. The Bucks paid a high price to get John Gruden from Oakland. Four draft picks and a boatload of cash. But Susie, it's paying off. Tampa Bay has the NFL's best record at 9-2. and two. But still, you have to wonder what Coach Gruden was thinking as his team was getting beat by the Saints in Week 1. Where did you think you'd be in Week 13? Well, we knew we had a good team. We also knew we are going to get what we deserved. And we just had to get back to the drawing board, keep biting, and keep pounding that rock. Biggest story of the week was Warren Sapp, Mike Sherman. How important is it for a coach to get his players back like you did this week? Well, it's very important. We just hope Chad Clifton's okay, and uh, Warren Sapp's a great player. I don't want to tarnish his image in this league and what he means to it, but that's done. we got to play the Saints now, and that's a big thing. Tonight, number one defense against one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL. What do you think is the most compelling matchup within the matchup? There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups, but uh, we got to play at our best tonight. The crowd's against us. It's going to be a great football game. Most of the people in this place think the Saints are hungrier for this win. What's your take? I don't know about that. We're pretty hungry. These guys uh, that we have here, I will say, do step up and play big every night, and uh, it's going to be no different. Have a great right, night. Thanks, and Mike, Warren Sapp adds that this is more than a statement. They have said privately that the road to the Super Bowl goes through Tampa. This is another step, and they owe the Saints big. All right, thank you, Susie. MasterCard presents ESPN SkyCam. Innovative technology on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. SkyCam provides some of the most unique and memorable images ever seen from angles no other single camera in the world can achieve. We're excited to bring it to you every Sunday night. And tonight is a game of huge importance in New Orleans. Let me tell you something. We've got to have this game, baby. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to be in the back of the heat. Look it in. No doubt we're going to war tonight. We're going to war tonight. I don't think there was a question of whether we were getting good advice or not from our old broker. We weren't we're not, getting advice. <laughs> My old broker. Unless I called him, he would never call me. For a lot of years, I just tolerated that type of treatment, and then I decided I would move my money to Schwab. This year, investors moved more than $30 billion to Charles Schwab. I think Charles Schwab is actually almost the opposite of a Wall Street firm. They treat me with respect. Well, I, I think they just get it. Come see why there's never been a better time for Charles Schwab. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back to New Orleans for the Bucks and the Saints. Tampa Bay controls the NFC South. A win tonight would virtually eliminate New Orleans and relegate them to wild card status. Atlanta hot on the heels of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Aaron Stecker is deep in their history. The Bucks have returned 1,572 kickoffs. They are 0 for 1,572. They have never returned one for a touchdown. Well, Michael, knowing you, they're probably going to do it tonight because you put the jinx on free throws, you may just get one for them tonight. You know, it's really not that far. It's <laughs> <laughs> not well, even 100 yards most of the time. Toby Gowen will kick it away. Huge game, particularly for New Orleans to get back in it and for the Bucks to try to creep up on home field advantage. We're underway in the dome. Stecker from the goal line. 1,573 without a touchdown. Steve Gleason the tackle. Brad Johnson comes into this game a very efficient quarterback. Has more touchdowns than he had a year ago, even at this point. He's going to have his task set up for him because he's going up against Fred Thomas and Dale Carter, the two corners of the New Orleans Saints. I talked to Rick Venturi, the defensive coordinator of the Saints. He said, we will do as well as our corners will be able to hold up and get their offense off the field. So look for the ball to go outside. Look for the corners and widest receivers to have their work cut out for them. Pittman starts at running back. Keyshawn Johnson in motion behind Brad Johnson. And Brad Johnson throws on first down, complete to Keenan McCardell. 
Cedric Hodge, the linebacker, on the stop. Well, with this offense, all you're going to see, not all, but most of what you're going to see is all that short dumps, runs, screens. They don't go deep. They would like to, but they don't. Well, Paul, the other problem he's had is the offensive line has been spotty. Kenyatta Walker's only in his second year. Dilger is a new tight end. Keyshawn Johnson's the only holdover. McCardle and Jared Vicious are brand new at the wide receiver position. And Jero Vicious, the ex-New York Giant, is in there now in a three-wide receiver set. Johnson with time out in the flat again to McCardell. He's got a first down and more. Brad Johnson, I think, is the perfect quarterback for this offense. He's 33 years old. His maturity has shown up in the last three weeks where he's thrown nine touchdowns and no interceptions. He's accurate. He gets rid of the ball quick. And what he's proven with the eye last week and the ribs a couple weeks ago is he what he's made the statement to John Gruden and his teammates is he's a tough guy. And, boy, every guy loves to line up when your quarterback is tough. Gruden said the quality of a quarterback's greatness is his toughness, and this is a tough SOB. Blitz coming. Sammy Knight, they love to bring him. Deep pass for Keyshawn, incomplete. Covered well by Dale Carter. We were talking the other day, and you know, when you, when you talk about this defense of the Saints, they're pretty good defense. Up front, they're very good, and they like their corners that they have. But when you look at Tampa's offense, there's no speed. No. There's no speed. And that's the thing that these corners, that's what Thomas will take advantage of and Carter will take advantage of. Kevin, Ken Irvin, the nickelback of the Saints, that's what they're going to do. They're going to lock down. I believe that Tampa on offense is going to have to run the football a little bit to set up some play action to get deep. Allstott is now in there as the fullback, the multiple pro bowler number 40. Fake the end around, now the screen. Pittman. Got one block, but not another. Crossed the 40, but taken down by Jay Bellamy and Cedric Hodge. I tell you, it is such a tough play for the safety because the safety is going to have an, a big old offensive lineman that usually weighs about 100 pounds more than you do. And then Jay Bellamy that time, what he did is he got through, and he makes the tackle. Just an outstanding play. you got to count on agility at that point, don't you? <laughs> and and, and, and got you. You gotta learn how to duck. Third and seven. It is a zoo in here tonight. Four man rush. Howard from behind. Loose ball. And the Saints have it. The Saints have it. New Orleans football on the turnover. Darren Howard just comes around the corner. There he is right there. He's just going to come right around the corner and get to Brad Johnson. There's no way Johnson has a chance. Look at the speed around the corner. Robin Owen, Owen doesn't stand a chance. Charlie Clemens got the recovery, and check it. That was Charles Grant. My mistake. He gets the sack. The Saints get the football. Brad Johnson never saw it. Great break for New Orleans. They take over at the 29. They're already chanting Deuce. And McAllister is working with a bad ankle. Plunges forward to the 25. He didn't play a week ago. McAllister with 950 yards rushing. And the, he is an example, one of the few times where a trade really worked for both ball clubs. They got rid of Ricky Williams, got draft choices in return, gave McAllister a chance to start. And after today, the Saints are going to get a higher draft choice because Ricky Williams went over 1,200 yards rushing. He almost went over 1,200 today. Second and seven. Brooks, little flanker pass to Horn. And Horn can't go anywhere because of Brian Kelly. Wonderful tackle on the corner. Uh, the biggest matchup tonight for, for this offensive line of New Orleans is Kyle Turley going up against Simeon Rice, who leads the National Football League with 11 and a half sacks. The quickness, the speed. Simeon Rice told us yesterday, and I believe him, I'm the best defensive end in football today. And I kind of like that. Yeah, it's going to be hard to argue. Well, 
the, in the, There's some good ones. But he didn't call on anybody being close. Hey, Hugh Douglas is pretty close, <laughs> but uh, Simeon's right there. Third and five. Draw play. McAllister to the 15 first down. You know what's so important about McAllister? He carried the ball on the first play. He carried the ball on the third play. He has been hurt. The question is, is he? Can he play? And he, what they need to do is show him. You watch him running up into this hole. He is walking straight, or running straight ahead. He's not trying to cut. But the question is, can he run? And he's already shown Tampa Bay Bandit Buccaneers that he can. Four wide receivers. The veteran Jake Reed, number 86, checks in as well. Brooks from the 15. Short set and throws low and incomplete. Intended for Dante Stallworth. Dwight Smith was on the coverage. This will be strength against strength. The Saints offense, number one until a week ago when they had a disaster against Cleveland. Fourth in the red zone. The Bucks defense giving up less than 24% of touchdowns when the team gets inside the 20. That's remarkable. And it really wasn't the offense that was disastrous. It was Aaron Brooks through two interceptions and fumbled the ball when he got inside the red area. He has got to be the one that's got to protect the football down here on this offense. Brooks takes the draw play. Under pressure and down he goes at the 16-yard line. Simeon Rice from behind. Simeon Rice and, and Kyle Turley. We talked about the matchup just a couple plays ago. Here we go. 68 on, six, six, on uh, 97. What's this? Look how quick Simeon Rice is. He goes to the outside and back in and makes the play. You know what? I will defend Kyle Turley on that one. Aaron Brooks was forced to bring the ball down. That was a great job by the secondary of the Bucks. And when Brooks had to move up inside, Simeon took advantage of the opportunity. Boy, he looks like he looks like a, a, a Spider-Man. He a looks sprinter, like Spider-Man. Ready to go. Comes out of the blocks in a heartbeat. Brooks Rice again. Got him at the 31. Simeon Rice has two sacks each in his last five games. What he said to us yesterday was this. You cannot outrun me. I have tremendous speed. He just showed speed and agility to get to the quarterback. Watch the agility. There's Now, here's the speed. The other thing he said that I thought was so important, he said, quarterbacks think that they can outrun me. That was a case right there of Aaron Brooks thinking that he could spin and outrun Simeon. He said, I love it when guys think they can outrun me. They were, were within easy field goal range. Now, Carney will have to drive from 48 and hooks it wide. So the Saints get a break, great break early on the fumble and two sacks pushes them back because of an NFL record by the sack man, Simeon Rice. Just how deep is the new Chicago dish pizza from Pizza Hut? With a pizza this deep, what more could you ask for? How about a deep discount on a second pizza? Now you can get any medium pizza for the unbelievable price of just $2.99 when you order the Chicago dish. That's just $2.99 for your old favorite when you buy your new favorite at Pizza Hut. Go deep. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Man, it doesn't show signs of stopping. And I brought me some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow. We should change before we pick up the girls. Okay. Chevy Avalanche. It changes from a pickup to an SUV. What are you doing? Avalanche, like a rock. In 1950.
1954, Paul Bear Bryant put 115 football players through hell. But those who survived lived to become champions. The Junction Boys, Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Simeon Rice now leads the NFL in sacks with 13 and a half for the season. He's already had two tonight, back to back. Well, he must have read what Jason Taylor and others did because he was going into today. He was the leading sacker. Then they found out, well, I need two to take the lead. I got him. So, and I don't think either one of them were Kyle Turley's fault. Pittman. Runs into a wall at the 40. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, Brad Johnson off to a rough start. Did not want a repeat of week one. He said he got really beat up, sacked three times, got hit 20 times, threw it away 13, and he points out they've continued to just beat people up. They're dangerous. They're unconventional. And he needs to do a better job identifying a very tricky defense. Susie, I think Brad Johnson will hang in there longer than any quarterback I've seen in a long time. He is willing to take a beating in order to give a receiver one more step to get open. Unloads this one in a hurry to Keyshawn out to the 46-yard line. You know, it's right funny. down there by the nickelback Ken Urban. The funny part talking to Brad Johnson is uh, defensively, we said, what do you think he could do to him? He says, well, we're not sure. Uh, we don't know what they do. So Joe said, well, what about cover two? Well, that's not necessarily... <laughs> It. They just go everywhere, and they, they line up, and they move, and they, they give you a different look every time they line up. The term, the term would be unconventional, yeah. I think, is a kind way to put it. Rick Venturi, their defensive coordinator, is one who likes to give Brad Johnson, as well as any other offense, a lot of different looks, a lot of people moving around, as you see. Third and two. Johnson wants to throw for it. It throws incomplete intended for Keyshawn at midfield. Brady Jackson was in his face. Joe, it has to be confusing for a quarterback. When you locate a linebacker, when you come to the line, he's on the far right side of the formation. By the time the ball is snapped, the same guy's on the far left side of the formation. What happens is what you saw. It forces you to speed your throws up and takes you out of your rhythm. I think Brad will find his rhythm, but right now he's trying to rush throws out to get away from the pressure that the Saints are bringing. Tupel will kick to Michael Lewis, who has more return yards than anyone in the NFL this year. The former beer truck driver telling everybody to get away from it. They punt the ball out of bounds. In a game that might hinge on field position so far, the advantage has just swung to the Buccaneers after a 38-yard kick. Nothing, nothing early in New Orleans. Warren Sapp and the number one defense in football takes the field again. We're here when you need us. 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 A&M Towing. And remember, we're here when you need us. Skis Jewelers, your official Rolex dealer. Forced, forced, forced. Forced, forced, forced. Forced, forced, forced. Speaks for itself. Force paint off West 11th on McKinley. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Heineken. It's all about the beer. Heineken. 
Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. And Pizza Hut, go deep with the new Chicago deep dish only at Pizza Hut. Jazz coming from Armstrong Park, named after the legend Louis Armstrong. Well, I bail out of here, I want those guys. Oh, yeah. Don't want that hat, though. Uh, I want those guys to play a little bit. I'm not going to hear it, but I want them to play a little bit. The Saints so far, minus one yard in total offense. McAllister on the toss, instead takes it up the middle. Last week after a Brett Favre interception, Warren Sapp leveled Packer offensive tackle Chad Clifton. The Bucks won the game, and afterward, Packer coach Mike Sherman and Sapp had a heated exchange. Said Sherman later, maybe I overreacted, but I thought it was kind of cheap. Sapp said if I was 25 and didn't have kids or a conscience, we'd have gone at it. It's a good thing he has kids in a concert. I tell you, it was a good hit. Brooks, good play fake, now under pressure. And throws it away. Warren Sapp's block in last week's game was the top story in the NFL. We asked him about the fallout afterward. I've hunted 35 different quarterbacks and got them on the ground, over 70 sacks. And at no time in this league I've ever been called a dirty player, a cheap shot, or anything. And that was the one most hurtful thing that a perception of me has turned into I'm a dirty player. Wow. I really don't see that. I don't think he's a dirty football player. And to be honest with you, if, if anything, it'll make everybody aware. If there's an interception, everybody's got to keep their head on a swivel. There is no way Warren Sapp is a dirty football player. No way. I, you know, that... That just to put this whole thing to bed with Warren Sapp. There was no play. False start. Offense number 68. Five yards remain. Third down. Mike Carey, our referee. Warren Sapp is not the kind of a football player that goes out and tries to intentionally hurt anyone. And, you know, he talks about linemen coming at him. That's part of the game. I think throwing blocks on interceptions is part of the game. As a quarterback, you were less concerned with trying to tackle somebody on an interception than you were protecting yourself. And I think the awareness for everybody in the league went up. And I echo what John Gruden said. All you can do is hope that Chad Clifton's going to be okay. Third and 11. Pocket collapsing. Here is Sapp after Brooks. Can't get him. Nice block downfield, but those Bucks just swarm. Crowd wanted a late hit out of bounds, but they won't get it. Rondé Barber led the charge over there. One last thing about Warren Sapp. I thought Tom Jackson made a perfect point this morning. He said if Clifton had not been injured, nobody would have said a thing about that hit, and he's absolutely right. But you know what? I admire Mike Sherman for sticking up for his football player. The way Mike saw it, he didn't feel it was necessary, and he felt it was cheap. And I admire him an awful lot for standing up for his players. Go along with that one, too. Toby going to punt to Carl Williams. Returnable kick. Williams to 36. And is buried. And a Jim flag. Hazlitt said, we have great speed on special teams. We can really cover kicks. And there's a marker down as well. It looked like an obvious block in the back on the return. Mike Carey, one of the best officials in the league, really controls the game. This game is looking an awful lot like the first time these two played. It's back and forth. It's very physical. This is a game where you have to get points when you can and protect the ball. And I think the Saints have to try and be able to run Deuce McAllister a little bit more to control that defense. Because guys like Brooks and Sapp. There was no foul on the kicking team. All of the action was legal. First down. I'm out. <laughs> it, was a, it was a legal mugging. I didn't realize muggings were legal anymore. <laughs> The 
two Wall Street hot shots. Somebody loves Charlie Sheen. Oh. Can I run a check for these? Can I see some ID? I'm going to have to call the bank. Is this going to take long? Yes. How's it going? This doesn't look like you. You did when I came in here. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. How's it going? We have a wonderful customer here at Walmart who is also the town Santa. He came up with an idea called Ho Ho Express. Santa raises money throughout the year with help from us here at Walmart. These are children that might not have any presents under the tree. They could spend their money on themselves, but most of the time they buy for their family. I got my mom a candle. It's them being able to put something under the Christmas tree for them to open on Christmas Day when they wouldn't have anything. I believe in Santa. It's just wonderful to give them a Christmas like that. I know he's real. Ice. One day you find you're up to your waist in it. If being in it buys one more day on top of it, fill up the tub. Fill up the tub. Nothing, nothing. First quarter, Bucks take over at their own 38 yard line. One of Jim Haslip's concerns the play of Mike Allstott. In five games, he's had two 100s against this New Orleans defense. Pittman gets the call, shakes a tackle, flag is down. Pittman breaks loose. But it looks like this will come back. What a play by Dale Carter, number 21. Dale Carter is not necessarily a big guy, but Kenyatta Walker, number 67, goes out to block him. And he comes up and just stops Pittman from getting outside. And Kenyatta Walker is the guy I think that was holding. He, did, he, just, he just fell on him. Personal foul, major face pass on the offense, number Ooh. 67. 15 yards, is still first down. Well, that's holding. If you're holding a face mask, that's holding. It's Kenyatta Walker. It's this offensive line has struggled all year. Really, one of the reasons Michael Pittman doesn't have bigger numbers. But you look on that line, and Kerry Jenkins is one guy you have to tip your hat to. He's in there playing with a broken bone in his leg and a fractured left eye socket. You just can't get him out of the lineup. First in a mile. Pittman. Now it's second in a mile. One of the things that the Saints have to be careful of is feeling like second down and 20 is not, is not the kind of yards you want to be aggressive on. You have to stay aggressive like this, even though it's long yards. How many times have we seen coaches go and rush three and drop eight, and all of a sudden it's a 15-yard completion and it's third and three? It's not in Rick Venturi's nature, the defensive no. coordinator of the Saints, I think, to back off. This is all about pressure for the Saints. Well, the problem there was they were trying to block Norman Hand. They couldn't move him anywhere at all, and he's in the hole. And he just swallowed Pittman. That ought to do it. There's two things that play into why this was a penalty. I believe the noise is a little bit of a problem, but more importantly, John Gruden's offense, and if you can get a shot of that car to his, has a lot of verbiage to it. So by the time he gets it into Brad Johnson and Brad relays it, they aren't even out of the huddle yet, and there's going to be 16 seconds by the time they get to the line. They shift a lot, so it takes time. It's important at this end of the field that you get the plays in quickly to your quarterback. Now it's second and 28. Johnson looks to his second man, completes it again to Keenan McCardell, the former Jaguar, one of the most prolific receivers around, picked up as a free agent acquisition in the offseason. Now third down is makeable. Third down is makeable. You only you need to pick up half. Here comes Keenan McCardell. Cardell, the last two years, 93 and 94 catches for the Jaguars.
Johnson double pump too far from McCardell again. Joe was looking at me. We'll have to punt. Joe was looking at me funny when I said it was third is makeable. I was thinking, you know, if it was, if it would have been third and twenty-eight, it wouldn't have been makeable. With third and fourteen, you, you still can't. You, I like your optimism. But I, you know, I, I, I like that optimism. I just third don't. And I don't see too many plays for third and fourteen, though. Do you? <laughs> no, I don't want to try and turn that into a makeable one. There are more than third and twenty-eight. Two put a kick to Lewis. Who has a punt return and a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Got them both in the same game against Washington. Line drive kick. Lewis from the 15. And takes it out across the 25 to the 26-yard line where Casey Crawford brought him down. And there's a flag on the play. Back near the line of scrimmage. the kind of game the Bucks wanted. They have allowed only seven yards to the New Orleans Saints offense. If it wasn't for football on Thanksgiving, I'd be sitting here talking to Uncle Larry all day. Got your nose. <laughs> Come on now. We're here when you need us. We're here when you need us. We're here when you need us. Thank you. <laughs> A and M Auto Body, and remember, we're here when you need us. Forbes, 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 Forbes. Force, force, force. Quality speaks for itself. Force paint off West 11th on McKinley. Timing. Strength. And grace under pressure. Qualities found in world show jumping champion Rodrigo Pessoa and in his timepiece, Rolex. Available at Skis Jewelers, your official Rolex dealer. 4-10 to go, first quarter from New Orleans, the Bucks and the Saints, no score. And now New Orleans has to start inside its own 10 against the best defense in the game. McAllister, the deep man in the eye behind Terrell Smith. Brooks. Incomplete. Joe Horn couldn't hold it. Brian Kelly was there defensively, but a pretty throw by Brooks. I love I love the call by Mike McCarthy, the offensive coordinator. Brian Kelly's having an all-pro year, and Joe Horn's an all-pro receiver. He just loses sight of this one coming down. Doesn't get his head down to make the play. Brooks makes a nice throw to give him a chance to get out of a hole. Second and ten. This defense, number one against the pass, number five against the run, and number one against points. And McAllister leans forward for a yard more on this. Like Jim Haslett recognized something that a lot of other people didn't when he traded Ricky Williams put the ball in Deuce's hands. Loves his natural speed. He plays with power. Good job blocking, receiving. Williams not for not being a big play threat. Three years in New Orleans, nine runs of 20 or more yards. Deuce already has eight. Not that Ricky can't get it done. A 53-yard touchdown run earlier this season and today. TD runs of 45 and 55 yards. 228 yards. A good deal for both teams. Sure was. Third and eight here. 
Two points for the Buccaneers defense. And what it is, this is, this is, this is a problem that Aaron Brooks has. Aaron Brooks does not step up in a pocket. He fades back. It was the first play of their last meeting. Now look, Aaron Brooks drops back as Kyle Turley is trying to run Simeon Rice around the cup. And he just drops back into him. Again, this is the fault, I believe, of a young quarterback. Yeah, but when you take a look at the angle that Simeon Rice took for this ball, it was the direct angle. I don't know where the quarterback was, was supposed to go because they were coming up into his face. Rice gets around and, and hits his arm. 14 and a half sacks for Simeon Rice. Three of them tonight. The Bucks defense has scored five touchdowns this year. They almost got another one. It ends up being a safety. If and in this game, who knows? 2 nothing might be good enough. If there's one thing about Aaron Brooks in his maturation as a quarterback, he's going to have to learn that he cannot continue to fade back to try and gain opportunities to throw the ball down the field. If anything, he's going to have to escape left, right, or straight up the middle. But you can't fall back, especially when you got somebody like a Simeon Rice coming from your blind side. Because you can't feel him. That pass rush is just ferocious. Well, and, and they know they're going to throw the ball and you've got to give Kyle Turley some help especially on Simeon Aaron Stecker check it Carl Williams who was back there with him and taken down around the 36 yard line we have seen nothing that would hurt their reputation tonight as the number one defense in the NFL they have scored the only points and already have three sacks against New Orleans. The new Silverado is here. Now with quadra-steer four-wheel steering, it's the most maneuverable full-size pickup you can get. Silverado, the truck from Chevy. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Man, it doesn't show signs of stopping, and I brought me some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow. Introducing Dockers, flat front mobile pant. Nice pants. You have done me a great injustice, Johnny. This is not fit for a man. New Blistex Clear Advance for men, Johnny. For men. It's shine free with tough protection. And I know about protection. New Blistex Clear Advance for men. For the extra point and the win. Snow. All right. Blizzard. All right. Get a choke? Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. 3-12 to go. First quarter of play from New Orleans. The Bucks with the safety. They lead it 2 nothing and have the ball back at their own 38-yard line. Mike Allstott now switches to tailback. And Allstott lowers his shoulder and gets to the 40. There's a flag down. Charlie Clemens, the middle linebacker, made the stop on the 248-pound fullback. Offside on the defense. Willie Whitehead, the defensive end. I want to show you what happened on that safety and why it's Aaron Brooks' fault. That's Kyle Turley. That's Simeon Rice. As he drops back, Aaron Brooks loses ground. All right, he sets. Now he's set right there. 
He should be going this way, not that way. This is what happens as he loses ground. He comes right into Simeon Wright's lap. Simeon Rice's lap. Brad Johnson, short set, throws to Allstott out to the 45-yard line. Darren Smith, the speedy linebacker, takes him out. Allstott, as a rookie, led the team in receiving, but as if they have changed offensive coordinators throughout the year, or throughout the years, his production as a receiver has gone down. Brad Johnson said to us yesterday, I, I, I didn't quite hear it, we need two points or 22 points. It was 22 with their averaging, but <laughs> two, two might be okay. Two might be okay. We'll get two tonight. We can hold off and win it. Second down, two yards. All start is the single setback. All start, nice hole up the middle, and the big guy just rumbles down to the 44. He is some weapon. Well, oh, he is he's going you, forward. He is some weapon when you get a hole in the middle of that line like he got. Christy Jenkins and Coleman right in the middle of the line. Keyshawn Johnson goes in motion. Watch this hole. They block everybody out, and look at where he runs, right straight up the middle. Well, if you can run against the middle of this defense, Grady Jackson at 330, Norman Hand at 310, you've done a good job by that offensive line. First time Tampa Bay has made it past midfield. Johnson has time, goes underneath, and complete for a short gain down to the 43. Catch made by Pittman. Monday Night Countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The best place to get ready for Monday Night Football. Then on ABC at 9, it's the Monday Night Game. Curtis Martin and the Jets against Jerry Rice and the Raiders. And, and, Chris Berman, the Boomer doing double duty, will be hosting the Countdown Show. Monday Night Countdown. Go Boomer, the versatile one. Second and six. Pittman on the toss, hitting the backfield. Dale Carter once again. He's playing a whale of a football game. Guy's been out, suspended for two months, has come back, said he really isn't into the flow quite yet, but he sure has done a terrific job tonight, both in pass coverage and run support. What are you looking well, at? Well, I'm just watching him stop two runs for losses. I think in he the said flow, it. I know he said, he it. said it. The flow came today. He's with flow. He's been fighting his demons after that second suspension. He said, I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't a daily battle. Third and eight. Blitz coming. Johnson, that one's tipped and caught and then dropped by Keyshawn Johnson. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. Dale Carter was there, but Keyshawn had a shot. Well, I'll tell you what, what a great play after it, because this was a catch. This was actually a catch. Keyshawn, what? Keyshawn goes down, then up, and catches the ball. And watch what Dale Carter does. Comes across and knocks the ball out of his hands. Darren Howard got a piece of it and tipped it up into the air. I don't know how Keyshawn just hung in the air that long. What I, like don't a Laker. what I don't understand is how Dale Carter got up above him. Dale Carter's been to four Pro Bowls. Keyshawn has been to three. Lewis will go deep for the punt of Tom Tupa. Angles it for the corner. And it will go into the end zone. 43-yard kick. Let's check in with Susie. Mike, last season, Simeon Rice took 10 weeks just to get acclimated to this defense. But this year, you can see what this guy is made of. His speed, his quickness, his strength. Warren Sapp says he is so exciting to watch. They've never seen anything like his ability. When he was with Arizona, it was all about just him having to make every play. But he fits so well into this defense. If he's not there, somebody else will be. But he's given him the freedom to really play his game. I mean, what do you do as a defense with Simeon Rice and Warren Sapp lined up next to each other? Uh, one of the things I found interesting that Simeon said was, he, you know, he didn't mind being the star. As a matter of fact, he he wants to be the star on this defense. He likes being the focal point. Well, three sacks a game will do it. Brooks to throw on first down, hit before he had a chance to set himself, and Warren Sapp just came in and drilled him. Well, Warren Sapp, you know, you talk about intensity and passion. Number 99 has it. Look at this. Inside. Oh. I mean, <laughs> 
was what, like a half, half step drop. Kendall Jaycock didn't stand a chance. No. The left guard just, it was like he wasn't there. The Saints have thrown five, six passes now for a minus 25 yards and, and minus two points. Just amazing to watch these guys play defense. Dante Stallworth checks in as a wide receiver. They go with the direct snap to McAllister, and he doesn't get much back out to the 24. Shelton Quarles out of Vanderbilt makes the stop. That's the end of the first quarter. 2-0 Bucks. Best overall value of the year. Toyota trucks at your Northwest Toyota dealer. Tundra. Highest overall safety rating for full-size pickups. Tacoma. Most payload in its class. Best trucks in initial quality. Tundra. Tacoma. Toyota. The new American standard for trucks. Right now, get 0% financing for 36 months on any Tundra or Tacoma. Only at your Northwest Toyota dealer. Now at Romania Toyota and Lithia Toyota. Get the feeling, Toyota. When you're a star, you can't have a lackluster body or a dull top. So I decided to give the whole works a makeover. So, what do you think? Uh-oh. Better get Mako. Mako repairs the damage and restores the value with everything a body needs. Plus, paint for every budget like the President's Smart Pack for $299.85. Sexy makeover, tiger. <laughs> Thanks for the table saw, honey. Do you really like it, sweetie? Oh, yeah, I really love it. Oh, look at this chop saw cut. I'm glad you're happy with it, dude. It's cutting just like butter. Like butter. Like butter. This trimmer is my favorite present ever, sweetie. Trim's pretty good there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, stand back. Need help carving the turkey? Who wants a drumstick? <laughs> Better head for Jerry's. Make a wish. Tampa Bay leading New Orleans 2-0 as we get ready to start the second quarter. You always hear fans talk about how much they enjoy games when the teams are scoring a lot of points. But if you love good old-fashioned football, this is just a joy to watch. See these defenses get after each other. Well, you know, I, I think a lot of fans now, after watching a lot of Sunday night games, are, are now learning about defenses because we've had some great defensive battles, and that's what's going to happen all night here. Well, you realize if, if uh, New Orleans goes and makes that protects that field goal opportunity, we have a 3-2 ball game. And you're right, Mike, it's a, it's a great pitcher's duel right now. It is a game of field position. That's going to be the key. And right now, Tampa Bay is winning that game of field position. And if it's 3-2 late, you bring in your closer. <laughs> Which would be Mike Allstott for the Bucks. Exactly. Another direct snap to McAllister. Breaks the tackle. Hit by Lynch and a first down for New Orleans out at the 33. So Jim Haslett going a little deeper into his bag of tricks. Well, you know, we, we had a, we had a t chance to talk to Hazard a couple of days ago and talking about his offense. And when you look at him and say, well, what about without McAllister? And he's, his eyeballs went right to the ceiling. I mean, without McAllister, what do we got? Well, it's not just him, but you've got Kyle Turley and Jerry Fontenot at the center and the left tackle are really the only guys that have been there. I mean, Spencer Falau is new. Charles Bentley is a rookie. He's new. So this team is still gelling. It's a very, very young offensive unit and has to continue to grow. That's why it's important that Aaron Brooks doesn't make mistakes with, and again, a young receiver like a Dante Stallworth. First they just think draft he, choice this year, and they think he has a tremendous future. Well, there he is up against Brian Kelly, who has a who's having a tremendous present. Less than he ever. <laughs> six interceptions. <laughs> replaced Donnie Abraham, who had six last year over there. <laughs> tremendous present, huh? Yeah. Stallworth's been bothered by a hamstring all year. McAllister finally starting to get some movement against that defensive line and they get into Tampa Bay territory. You know the thing about Deuce McAllister, you talk about bad leg, forget that. Watch him move the defensive line. When he slams in there, watch this. Watch this line go backwards. Now he's got some blocking help up front, granted. But watch this, bang. Bang. And there's three more yards. The only negative about the Bucks defense, they are small. Flea flicker. 
Brooks wobbles it down the middle, and it's still completed to 20, Joe Horn. That thing almost went end over end. You have to be able to run the football to pull this play off. This is a terrific goal. Again, Mike McCarthy, the offensive coordinator, will not back off. They've been aggressive. Deuce does a nice job of selling the run. And Aaron Brooks does a good job of getting the ball out. Joe Horn making like he's going to block the safety, then breaks in front of Dexter Jackson to make the reception. Well, I'll tell you where Brooks threw that ball is the only place that he had to throw it. He had to get it as far wide as he possibly can, or that would have been picked off. Now he's got to protect the opportunity again. McAllister lowers his shoulder and gets about three. Guys, you talked, you talked about Deuce McAllister. Watching him practice against this uh, uh, on Friday, you would not have thought that he would have been ready to play. He looked like he couldn't run and hobble and turn, but he's run very hard tonight. I'm very impressed, especially against, you know, linebackers like those three guys. They're all about 230. You've got pro bowlers in the secondary in John Lynch and Rondé Barber, and looks like Brian Kelly's on his way. Dexter Jackson has been a big plus for them, their free safety. Second and eight. Look at this. Brooks on a boot leg. Got a great block on the corner. And then is cut down. What a tackle by Kelly. Fontenot starts it with a tremendous block on the outside. Kelly has been great in coverage. He's been great as an interceptor. He leads the league. And he's been great as a tackler. There's the good play action fake. That's Jerry Fontenot at the center that comes out. And it's the Aaron, Aaron Brooks. You know, feels like he can he can outrun people, but he's he's not quite that fast. Kelly does a nice job of playing Horn back and then coming up and making the play. It's a good looking play. It resulted in a gain of one. Third and seven. Timeout. And now Brooks has to burn a timeout. 10:55 to go in the first half from New Orleans. It's two nothing. 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Delivered by UPS. Right now, fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 each way when you purchase by December 12th. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. There's a place that I travel. When I want to roam, then nobody knows it but me. The roads don't go there, and the signs stay home. And nobody knows it but me. It's far, far away, and way, way afar. It's over the moon and the sea. And wherever you're going, that's wherever you are. And nobody knows it but me. Chevy Tau, like a rock. Rated E for everyone. NBA 2K3. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL, an official airline of Super Bowl 37. Sega Sports, Computer Associates, the software that manages e-business, and Motorola bringing intelligence everywhere. Hello, Moto. Aerial coverage tonight, courtesy of Southwest Airlines. I think that I think that this play third and seven in the red area right here will define Aaron Brooks. Maybe I know it'll define him for tonight, but this could be a start of something good and or bad for him. He's got to be smart with the football. Wasn't last week and wasn't in the beginning of this game. They show blitz and come with it, and he's smart. He got it out to the corner for a first down at the five-yard line. Jake Reed, the 12-year veteran out of Grambling, makes the big catch. Boy, does he read? Does he read the blitz and? get rid of this ball in a hurry watch how fast the step back two steps and then fires 
Here's Reed on the outside. He gets the first down. But that's quarterback receiver reading the defense. And that's nice because he's got Derrick Brooks coming right in his face. Nice quick decision recognizing the defense. Deuce. Deuce. Still have to be smart here. First and goal just outside the five. McAllister on the toss. Brooks. Can't hold him. Touchdown. lead block from Terrell Smith. Oh, I'll tell you, number, Terrell Smith, number 44. Watch him. Here he comes. Bang! He just knocks Lynch to the outside. Look at this. It Bang! I mean, you talk about these guys getting downfield and laying some people down. Coaches always talk about we get close to the goal line, we can only block so many people. You saw Smith on Lynch, then you saw Falau on Dexter Jackson. And then it was up to Deuce McAllister to take Derrick Brooks with him as far as he could and took him all the way to the end zone. And John Gruden is not used to seeing that happen to his defense. He beat the All-Pro on that one. And they are out to go for two. This will tie an NFL record the tenth time they have gone for two. McAllister. No. Got to the one and then shoved back. John Lynch, the all-pro safety, filled the hole and made the big stop. Somebody's going to have to explain to me why. I don't quite understand why you'd go for two in that situation. He turned boys ah, that's how it's done. into players. He turned players into champions. Tom Berenger as Paul Bear Bryant, the Junction Boys. Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. What can you do in today's economy? Write it out. And always be secure in a Coachman RV from Ingram RV. Affordability and livability make Coachman the number one selling name of trailers and fifth wheels in America. Pay just $156 a month for Coachman Spirit of America travel trailer. You'll also get Ingram's family fun package free. And your new Coachman qualifies as a second home for tax savings. Write it out in a new RV from Ingram RV, today's most comfortable investment for those who pursue happiness. Skis Jewelers, your official Rolex dealer. Over 3 million tires in stock. The West's largest selection. Small car, large pickup, SUV, studded or studless. Where? Your Les Schwab Tire Center. All season tires starting at $19.95. Snow tires as low as $24.99. To save time and money, let us put them on snow wheels. For extra traction, ask about quick fit change. Batteries, too, for cold winter starts. Les Schwab, winter at its worst. Can't match Les Schwab at its best. Impressive drive by the New Orleans Saints after gaining minus one yards in their first three drives. They go 80 yards in 5-12 to get the touchdown, but they do not get the extra point because they go for two. Toby going to kick it away. Aaron Stecker. Flag is down as Stecker reaches the 23. Roger Knight on the tackle on special teams for the Saints. Illegal block in the back by the return team number 52. Distance to the goal. They retain possession. First down. Timeout. Shelton Quarles, the linebacker, called for the block in the back. Brad Johnson's turn after this. The new Silverado is here. Now with quadra steer, four wheel steering. 
It's the most maneuverable full-size pickup you can get. Silverado, the truck from Chevy. Hello, Moto. Security software protect your entire enterprise without making you jump through hoops. Ready for that 10 o'clock, Dave? Coming. Ours can. Comprehensive security solutions from Computer Associates. Ice. One day you find you're up to your waist in it. If being in it buys one more day on top of it. Fill up the tub. Fill up the tub. More than 68,000 fans in the Superdome tonight to see their Saints against the Bucks. It's 6-2, second quarter. Tampa starts from its own 10. Brad Johnson to Keyshawn Johnson. Whacked as he got to the 17-yard line. Dale Carter with a big stick. I feel like Tampa Bay is playing into the defensive hands of the Saints a little bit. That was their 13th pass. And they've only run the football four times. They're, I know they're using their passing game as a running game, but if they don't, if, you know, you wind up third and three again here, it's just putting pressure on the pass. Right now, the Saints defense is dictating to Tampa's offense. Keyshawn caught 106 a year ago, knew with the additions to the offense he wouldn't get that many this year. Says he doesn't mind. He'd much rather have a Super Bowl ring. And McCardell, who was the major offseason acquisition, makes his fourth catch and has a first down. Dale Carter is all over this football field. I'm telling you, he is whacking people. And he's also smiling. If you could play like that, you'd smile too. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would. I mean, guy went to four Pro Bowls. I mean, what a talent. You hope he's got his life squared away to a point where he's able to contribute to this game and maybe be an example to other people that you can fight the demon and come out on top. First down for the Bucks. Pittman is the single setback. Johnson to throw again. Throws low but complete. And McCardell makes another catch at the 29. Joe, to emphasize your point about the offense for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they've thrown the ball 15 times tonight. They've only run it four. And they did get a first down with a run with Allstott. And One. It, and it also could be the way that John Gruden chooses to attack this defense. I, what, Brad Johnson threw 52 or 53 in their first meeting in the opener. And remember Brad Johnson, number three all-time in completion percentage. So he is incredibly accurate, always has been. Allstott now the deep man. And Allstott will get the carry. Check in with Susie. Mike, you guys are discussing you're not seeing many runs. Well, that's been the sore spot for this team. 29th in the NFL. If they could improve that, John Gruden would have just what he wants. I mean, think of his best offense in Oakland a couple years ago. The team goes 12-4. and four. They have the number one running game in the NFL. But Brad Johnson points out, it takes about three years to get acclimated to this offense. We know they're not explosive. They've been passing the ball about 30 times a game. It seems like tonight they'll outdo that. Well, they let Warwick Dunn go as a free agent to Atlanta and sign Pittman from Arizona. So they have lost a big play capability from Dunn. Pittman hasn't given it to them. Johnson to McCardell. There's an example of what we said earlier. Brad Johnson will stand in there and take a hit in order to deliver the ball. I'll tell you what, this is arm strength. This shows you his arm strength because he's going back. Here is the play. Watch Brad Johnson. He's going to be going back. He sees Keenan McCardo. He turns and he gets that body turned. 
Dale Carter's hanging on. He runs a little out and up. Keenan McCardell, that's experience. When he sees his quarterback is in trouble, he turns and heads to a spot where he can get the ball out. There's Brad Johnson making sure that Whitehead's okay after he hit him. <laughs> yeah, Are you okay? I, I'm all right. Remember, this guy's playing. I had his eye scratched last week, playing with sore ribs, and that's Dale Carter down on the field. Once he made the tackle, he wound up um, getting his shoulder hurt. Keenan McCardell has already caught six passes for 74 yards. He's been over 1,000 yards four of his last six years in Jacksonville. Had 36 coming into this game with three touchdowns. Keyshawn Johnson had 50. Gruden loves to be able to balance his wide receivers. Last year in Oakland, Tim Brown had 91. Uh, Jerry Rice had 83. Both of them had nine touchdowns. He will balance this offense so that both guys will be able to contribute. This is not good news for New Orleans Saints. That's Dale Carter, the guy that we've been talking about for a quarter and a half, who's been hitting everybody all over the place, and he's holding his shoulder. Could be a stinger. You're hoping. Johnson so far in this game, 11 out of 15, 96 yards. Carter has had an impact defensively, but he's out of there now, and Ken Urban is back in at the corner. Saints show blitz and come with it. Johnson steps up to all stop. All stop in the open field. 20, 10, touchdown. 44 yards to all stop, and Brad Johnson knew he had a hot receiver and found it. Brad Johnson doesn't have to run around and make plays, but he has such wonderful pocket presence. Watch what he does. Look at his feet. They're always moving. Steps up. Converse to that, we saw Aaron Brooks when he felt pressure back up. Here's the result. was a touchdown. The other one was a, a safety. Look at the hands on all side. Catches the ball in his hands. Oh, is that pretty? And this guy's got some speed. He's just not a big lumbering guy who runs into the middle of the field. Yeah, he is. He's a big lumbering guy with speed. <laughs> <laughs> Grammatica for the point after. And the Bucks offense produces something. Jim Haslett was worried about Mike Allstock. He had every right to be. Mike Allstott has scored his sixth touchdown this season, and the Bucks regain the lead 9-6 over the Saints. Dramatica kicking off. Dale Carter, we're told, has a left shoulder strain. His return is questionable. Dramatica to kick to Michael Lewis. Line drive, bounding kick. Lewis fields it at the seventh. And taken down at the 27. Sometimes when you blitz, you wind up leaving the middle of the football field open. That's Mike Allstott in the backfield. Here come the blitzers outside. The linebackers lock up. Allstott just finds the hole in the middle. Brad Johnson steps up and delivers the football. A little play action fake. Backers are out. There's Mike. And you were right, Mike. I mean, he's, he's a big guy, but he's really fast. But one of the things you have to have also is wide receivers blocking downfield. Keyshawn lets one man go and then goes gets Fred Thomas, who is a corner, the one man that could possibly catch all stop. He knocks him off. Touchdown. There's a there's a running back that appreciates what off what wide receivers can do yes, for you. Yes, he does. Most big runs are the result of wide receivers blocking downfield. And Keyshawn. Will take punishment going over the middle, always has. He's a big, tough guy. It's a lot quieter this trip in. Well, the Saints just used a timeout to make it even more quiet. No, I'm talking about Keyshawn. He was a little more reserved. It's sore ribs. He's hurt. Sore ribs stop you from talking? It, they did him. Maybe. You ought to try getting a sore lip. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is Thank much you, more Kyle. at peace with himself right now and with this football team. Well, he was always he a guy who was saying, I got to have the ball because I don't see anyone else around here who can do anything. Now he's got some other weapons. You remember in a Monday night game earlier this year, he blew up at John Gruden. And the reason he blew up at him was because Keenan McCardell went in on a certain play and he wanted to be on the field. And I think everybody now on that sideline understands who's in charge and what their job is.
McAllister trying to take it outside, wrapped up and hitting the backfield. Ball comes loose. Rondé Barber had a shot at it. Now it's John down. Lynch. It's down. The ball is down and dead. And that is not reviewable. But it sure is going to be interesting to look at. Warren Sapp pleading his case, but it won't do any good. Would have been a Bucks touchdown. Here's a look from Skycam. Deuce McAllister trying to get outside this defense, which we know is difficult. He's struggling. He's fighting. Oh, well, he's nowhere near on the ground. That's a fumble. There's no question that's a fumble. Yeah, he's sitting. He is sitting on the defender. He is nowhere near on the ground. Darby Chardick, or Chardick Darby, he's sitting on him. Big break for the Saints. Now Brooks on the run, throws, and ruled incomplete. Joe Horn says he made the catch, but the official who had a good look at it rules incomplete. You know the thing about McAllister on that play, when you really look at it, there's a forward progress deal that's involved in there, Joe. And if they feel that he can't go any further, they and they both, I, I know, you don't like it. No, no, I don't have a problem with it. That's the way the officials they, call it. That's fine. That's what they call, they call forward progress with stop. I, I tell you one thing, the Saints offense has got to slow this train called the Tampa Bay Buck defense down and now a little the, bit right now. The fans want them to challenge that last play, and here's the red flag. The Saints were out ready to run another play, and the crowd saw it on the Jumbotron here in the stadium. And evidently somebody upstairs saw the same thing. Oh, uh, Horn is the only one that knows whether he caught it or not. And he believes he did. Mike Carey comes over to talk to Jim Haslett. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass being challenged by New Orleans. We'll have a look with instant replay. So Joe Horn pleads his case enough for Haslett to review it. Does he get his hands underneath? Yeah, I, I think he I think he I think he does get his hands underneath. Right. Okay. Look at the ball. Does it hit the ground? The, the tip of the ball, does it hit the ground? There, yes, it does. It's on the ground. It's on the ground. Went through his hands. It's on the ground. On the ground. Good try, though. I'll tell you the other part. You know where it hits the ground again? Over his back. The tip of the ball is on the ground again. Not there. That other way. Their ball was on the ground. Now watch it now. The tip hits the, hits the ground again. So it's but down I, twice. But I think in that case, he had control of it. So the ball could hit the ground. It the, was the first time that makes it incomplete. But I also think, guys, this plays into the hands of the Saints a little bit. It looks a little bit like a 20-second timeout in basketball. Tampa Bay was just coming after this offense and coming after it. They needed something to slow the momentum down a little bit and settle down a little bit. Well, if they lose this challenge, it is their last time out. You can vote with us right now. Log on to ESPN.com or NFL.com. Click on the ETV logo and vote whether this should be upheld or overturned. All right, I'm not going to tell you how to vote, but vote incomplete. <laughs> Thank, thank you Let for not sharing stand. that with us. I don't want, I don't want to influence anybody. After reviewing the play, the ball slipped through the receiver's hands and hit the ground for an incomplete pass. The ruling of the field stands. New Orleans is charged with their third and final timeout. You have to say, out of challenges for the half. You would have to say a rather unpopular decision here in New Orleans. But the correct one. Yes, it was. And they're also out of challenges for the half. Because they have no timeouts. So you can't challenge if you don't have timeouts. Even though they have one more in the second half. But you can get a challenge from the booth inside two minutes. Let's go get him, Joe, with our... We know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm impressed. <laughs> now it will be third and 13. Four wide receivers, and when they spread the field like this, they usually end up one-on-one -on -one against Rice and Sapp. And this is what Simeon Rice lives for, third and 13. There are the sprinters block. They show blitz and back out of it, and the pass is too high. Intended for Jake Reed trying to hit him down the seam, and that will bring the punt team on for the Saints. Yeah. 
The Bucks are the best in the league, forcing three and outs. 45% of the time, the offense runs three plays and has to punt. I have a feeling Warren Sapp knows where the camera is at all times. Going to kick it away. Carl Williams will make the fair catch at the 40-yard line. Tuesday night on ESPN, it's an ACC Big Ten Challenge. A college basketball doubleheader at 7 Eastern. Number four, Duke against Ohio State at 9 Eastern. A national championship rematch. Steve Blake at number 11, Maryland, against Tom Coverdale at number 20, Indiana. Indiana fresh off that Maui Invitational Championship. We got another one of those don't go away games. Oh, yeah. Don't go anywhere, folks. <laughs> See, what they ought to do is, like, skip one of the afternoon games and take a nap so they'll be ready for our game come Sunday night. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. The Saints have been able to move the ball one time tonight. It resulted in a touchdown as they went 80 yards to score. But the Bucks have a touchdown and a safety. Carter is back in the game. Brad Johnson to throw. McCardell at the sideline couldn't keep his feet in. <laughs> Even though he didn't get that one, he's having himself quite a half. Keenan McCardell, there he is out in the flat. This is the second play of the game. Winds up picking up some yards. Right in the middle, bailing Brad Johnson out. Over on the sideline. You see he's used everywhere. There's some hustle when Brad Johnson was in trouble used in a lot of different ways. He's a very veteran receiver and, and really misses working with his old buddy Jimmy Smith, but I think he's found a new home. Just a wonderful receiver. Nice guy. Got to be happy for his success. There's a flag down on the play. Brad Johnson to Keyshawn, and he's to the Saints 49-yard line. Now we'll check the penalty flag. Cedric Hodge with another tackle. And one of the Bucks is hurt. Michael Pittman is down in the backfield. There are two fouls, both on the defense. Offside, number 94, is declined. And personal foul, roughing the passer, number 91 of the defense, lowering the head to the quarterback, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic. That's great. Jackson charged with the personal foul. That's Cozy Coleman right there. And, of course, there's Michael Pittman. We'll put the big circle on him back. What happens to Pittman is as Coleman comes back, Pittman just trips over him, gets his ankle caught around his foot, and Grady Jackson lowers his head right into the chest of Brad Johnson. That's got to feel good with uh, broken ribs healing. You know, that time he hit him in the sternum. So at least it wasn't on the ribs. Well, you know, we had this discussion with Hazlitt a couple of days ago. And what is roughing the passer? He didn't hit him head to head. But you he didn't hit him in the head with his hand. But you can't use your helmet as, as a weapon. As a weapon. And that's what he did do. Pittman able to get up and walk off under his own power. 521 yards rushing so far on the season for the speedster who plied his trade at Arizona for four years. Another guy that left Arizona with really good hands. I mean, they've, they've struggled with the running backs out there. Since Larry Centers left, who had an unbelievable day in Buffalo in that snowstorm, and now Michael Pittman here with Tampa. A personal foul call moves it all the way down to the 35-yard line. All Scott back in as the single running back, and he'll get the ball. Allstott with those nifty feet takes it outside, picks up three to the 32. Darren Smith in on another stop. It, you know, <laughs> it's, it's where do you hit Allstott? Not uh, there. You, well, you don't hit him low around the legs because he'll run through that part. And then you don't hit him high because then he'll carry it for a while. Now watch Clements, number 56. Watch this. I'm going to go down here and grab him around his legs. Wrong. Doesn't even slow him down. Well, how are you going to get around him? He didn't slow him down. His arms weren't long enough to get around. And Darren Smith had to help out.
Johnson to throw. Out to the sideline, complete to Jameel Cook. The backup running back, and Brad Johnson, as usual, right on target. This offense is run like John Gruden ran the Oakland offense and called plays. He has a quarterback that can handle it in Brad Johnson, but he uses all his backs, Michael Pittman, Jamil Cook, Mike Allstott. He rotates backs in and out. Whatever they do well, he takes advantage of it, and all of them catch. Only 14 out of 19 so far. And another first down for Tampa Bay, Allstott. Lowers the shoulder and drags Charlie Clemens for another yard. It was interesting when John Gruden became the coach of this team. Brad Johnson was the one quarterback he didn't publicly mention. He went out and got Rob Johnson as a free agent, talked about Sean King. He got the idea Brad Johnson was not the number one guy in his plans. But halfway through the preseason, he says, I've seen enough. This guy's my starter. But fortunately for Brad Johnson, he was the incumbent from a year ago, and it gave him a little bit of an edge, and he took advantage of that opportunity. John Gruden found out just how good he is. Flag goes down as Brad Johnson tries to call a timeout. I don't know if he made it before the play clock went to zero. Let's go to Susie. Well, you were talking about Brad Johnson. You know, he wasn't expecting to be endorsed in the preseason. He's always kind of gone through these things. His senior year at FSU, he sat behind Casey Weldon. And his eight years in the NFL career, he's been through every kind of quarterback. Rich Gannon, Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, Jay Fiedler, Rodney Pete, Jeff George, Rob Johnson, you name it. And you know what? He expects that there'll be somebody else in Tampa next year. The bottom line, he said, from the start, learn the system inside and out. Everything will take care of itself. And it has here. He, he's entrenched as a starter now. Susie, you know, you would think after the year he had, 99 with the Redskins, threw for 4,000 yards, had 24 touchdown passes, which just sparkling all year that somebody go, what have we been missing here? Well, Daniel Snyder decided he had a fancy for Jeff George. Yes, he did. And, uh, you know, Brad Johnson's the guy who threw for that many yards, went to the Pro Bowl, and didn't get rewarded for it. They had a legal motion before he called timeout, so they got penalized five yards. Second and 13. Johnson has to try to scramble sack at the 25. Now here's a chance, here's a time when he gets sacked. But you said something, Michael, about him in the first quarter. The defense is driving the defense is crazy. He'll hold the ball longer than most. That time he held it a little bit too long and then decided to run. But what he did not do is go backwards and take a sack. He's still within field goal range, and that's having great presence on the field. Third and 15 as we tick toward two minutes. Four-man rush and pressure. And Johnson throws it away. They got an illegal man downfield. Cozy, Cozy Coleman thinks he's a wide receiver <laughs> running downfield. <laughs> Cozy Coleman was down there to five. I mean, he looked good, though, Joe. Come on. He did. Cozy looked good. He looked like he broke into But he field. also looked that 60 kind of blares at people. There's the ineligible. And this is... This is an interesting decision for Jim Haslip, isn't it? Do you give them an opportunity? Of the offense downfield number 60 no, you is don't. declined fourth down. No, you don't. You make him kick the field goal here. That's it. It would be 42 yards from here. And certainly, Grammatica has plenty of leg to reach that. at a 53-yarder this year. Well, if there's one place that he has struggled, it's from 40 to 49 yards. He's only 5 for 8. This would make it a 12-6 ball game. Out of the hold of the putter, Tom Tupa. you love this game here it is take a look at this ball right there it really looks like it's in and then it fades and then it hits go post two funny things 
We've reached the two-minute warning officially at 1.59. It's still a three-point game. Martin Gramatica hit the upright with a 43-yard field goal try. His club still leads by three, but New Orleans takes over at its own 33-yard line with a minute 59 to go in the half. Brooks goes to the shotgun. Right down the middle, and the ball comes loose after the catch by Payton. They will rule it incomplete, and he was creamed by Dexter Jackson, who is down. Aaron Brooks does a nice job of stepping up in the pocket and making a perfect throw to Jerome Payton. Payton's got it. One, two, Whoa. no. That ball comes out just before that foot gets on the ground. Or he'd take a pop. There's one, two, uh-uh. You have to do something with it after you get both feet down. Well, he did something with it. Yeah, you let it go. Dexter <laughs> Jackson did something with it. He, got, he almost got torn in half. And the four-year veteran from FSU is still down. He has gotten a lot of big hits this year. Maybe even as many as John Lynch because Lynch has been such a focus for offenses that they've been using Lynch as a decoy and Jackson as the primary guy. And it's allowed John Lynch to be able to come up late. You really don't have in this defense a strong safety and a weak safety. You have two very big fellas at 6'2 and 220 and 6'1 and 203 who are athletic enough to come up and play the linebacker position. A lot like what they do with Adam Archuleta in St. Louis. Get him up and let him run running backs down. Jackson able to get up and walk off next Sunday night at 7.30. We hope you'll join Chris Berman and Tom Jackson for NFL Primetime. Then Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss, and the Vikings will go to Green Bay to take on Brett Favre and the Packers on ESPN Sunday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern. I wonder what the temperature will be at kickoff. I don't care because it's getty even night. That's right. We are told it is supposed to start snowing in Green Bay about Wednesday. We'll get there Friday, and it's going to be about thigh high, I think. <laughs> the Vikes had a chance today to pull one out, and Atlanta made a great comeback. Michael Vick's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Brooks airs one out for Stallworth. Tremendous coverage by Dwight Smith, who was with him stride for stride. You know, when you watch a game like this and you and you read about the defenses, you know that, that Tampa Bay is number one and New Orleans, is, they're, they're very good at what they do. You expect a game like this. You know, you really don't expect a big play. And the one big play that we've had in this ball game is all starts run. It's the only one. Well, it was the same thing that happened for Tampa in the first game. They had one big pass play and one big run play. But a game that's got this good of defenses, you don't expect more. Third and ten, they show blitz and they come. Brooks unloads the screen to McAllister. Nice call against the blitz, but McAllister will be stopped short of the first down. Derek Brooks, the all-pro outside linebacker, caught him and brought him down after a gain of eight. What a job by Derek Brooks. It's the perfect call on a blitz. And he's the one that runs it down. Number 55. Here they come. There comes the blitz. There he is. He's weeding around. Look at him. From behind. He makes the play after he puts pressure on the quarterback. Turns around to make the play. And Tampa takes one of their timeouts before the punt because they have a minute and 37 seconds. Tampa Bay on top. 9-6. You talked about that first game. Here's the way it ended in overtime. Saints punter Tom Tupa, or rather Bucks punter Tom Tupa, sensing a block tries to throw a pass, but James Allen is there for the interception. The automatic touchdown and the win. It was only the fourth interception in the end zone in the last 70 years of the National Football League. Tom Tupa actually is their third quarterback. I was talking to him on the field before the game. He said, Joe, I got to run. I have to go warm my arm up. He's not left-handed, though, is he? No. Oh, I just wonder because that pass is through his left hand. Carl Williams is deep. Takes it on two hops. And is swarmed under at the 21, a three-yard return after a punt of 43. 
Still plenty of time to go in the first half. 127 left and a timeout for Tampa Bay. I, ex I expect Brad Johnson to spread this ball out all over the place. Normally, the way the Tampa Bay Bucks will start this offense under John Gruden will be with a couple of slants by the wide receivers. Then they'll try and hit a fullback or someone over the middle. And what they'll do is methodically try and take six, seven, eight yards till they get around the 45-yard line, and then they'll try to throw some deeper balls. That's been the way that John Gruden has run his two-minute offense. And then on fourth down, they'll punt. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> they also use a timeout in there somewhere. <laughs> Three wide receiver formation. Pittman is the running back. And Pittman will get it on the draw. Breaks a tackle, takes it out to the 29-yard line. See, so many teams do that. If they can break one for 20, 25 yards and get themselves pretty decent position, they'll open it up a little. As much pressure as New Orleans likes to bring, it's a good call against them. Second and two, clock approaching a minute. Johnson has already hit 70%, goes to Pittman, and he'll lose a yard. Nice play by Darren Smith, the outside backer. Ten years in the league, has a couple of interceptions, and that time he just wraps up Michael Pittman, doesn't allow him to get the first down. They're going back in a huddle and runs the clock off. I don't, you know, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't like that draw play. You have a minute and 30-some seconds, you run a draw play. If you're going to run that draw play, then call a timeout after that. But don't run a draw play. Go up to the line of scrimmage, take a snap. They're down in Inside of what? They're getting inside of 30 seconds now. They're just going to run the clock out. Well, once the draw play only got 10, I think they just decided yeah, it's over. We're going to go to the locker room with this lead. If they throw, it'll be safe. Instead, Pittman will carry. The Saints do not have a timeout to stop it. And the Bucks are going to let the clock run out. 9-6 may sound like a battle of field goals, but we haven't had one in this game. 9-6 at the half. Let's go to Susie. John, it's a battle. How do you keep from getting your quarterback beat up? It's a hard thing in this league, isn't it? I tell you, we're uh, in a tight game. We know it's going to be that way when we play the Saints. Saints, we got a long way to go. You've already got a poster of Simeon Rice up in your son's room tonight. Three sacks, a forced fumble. How much does this guy impress you? Well, he's a great player, and we're going to need him to play that way in the second half. But uh, I think his play speaks for itself. Thanks, John. All right, thank you, Susie. Our score here at the Superdome, the Bucks nine, the Saints six. Let's join Chris Berman for the Toyota Halftime Show. At the half, the Bucks lead the Saints 9-6. Welcome back to New Orleans, everybody. The Saints come into this game with the second highest scoring offense in the National Football League in the first half against the number one defense in the league. They've been held to six points. Defense usually beats offense. It is right now. Well, you're going to find out in this second half. One of these two are going to blow up. And maybe for only one play. But it's going to be a blow-up. Well, if anybody's going to blow up, it's probably going to be at the hands of Simeon Rice. He's had a, he's had an unbelievable half. He's he's forced a fumble. He's put him out of field goal range. I mean, he alone really has been responsible for five points. Uh, three that the Saints might have gotten and the two with the sack. He's been a one-man wrecking crew for this offense. But in, his, in Kyle Turley's defense, the guy that has to block him, this is the guy, Aaron Brooks, that has to make better decisions with the football. He did in the second quarter. He's going to have to keep it up the Saints gained a mere 83 yards in the first half most of it coming on one drive the result of their only touchdown Lewis knocked out of bounds by Gramatica moments ago Susie Culber had a chance to catch up with Jim Haslett Jim, how do you neutralize Simeon Rice? Well, the big thing is we got to stay out of a position where it's third and long, and uh, they're just taking advantage of what he does best, and that's pass rush. So uh, right now, field position is hurting us, and uh, if we can get that changed with this opening kickoff, we'll be fine. Thanks, Coach. So they'll spot the ball at the 46. Good field position for the Saints to start the second half. What do you do differently on offense 
to try to at least neutralize that defense. Well, I, I think the Saints have moved the football. They've made some poor decisions on either end. I think you go back to running Deuce McAllister up the middle. You have to pound Deuce, and then Aaron come up with a big play. Mike McCarthy, their offensive coordinator, is not going to back off. I think the Saints have to stay aggressive. McAllister's been their big weapon, 46 yards on 10 carries. And he gets it on the little cross butt and picks up two to the 49-yard line where Warren Sapp brought him down. McAllister missed last week with a bad ankle and comes up a little gimpy after that tackle. Yeah, unless Deuce McAllister is at full speed, he hurts this offense because everyone knows on the defense, if he's hurting, when you fake to him, it doesn't make any difference. You're not going to give him the ball. So now they really have a problem. You get away from, from the, all the play fakes and just go back and throw the ball if you're going to throw it. And I think you got to count on the young guy, James Fenderson, who's right there to play for you. First-year player out of Hawaii, Brooks. Backs up against pressure and throws incomplete right in the hands of Terrell Smith, and the fullback couldn't hold it. Fenderson and Curtis Keaton split the running back duties a week ago and did not produce a whole lot. Well, here's the situation that every single coach is talking about, the fact that you, you're third and long, you, you, you don't have much of a chance. No, you always hear coaches say, we got to stay out of third and seven. But when they talk about playing against Tampa, they say, we've got to stay out of third and seven. <laughs> third and four becomes a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and there's one of the problems. Simeon Rice will get in that track stance and ready to come, and flags go down. They had Brooks blitzing on that play, and if they hadn't have blown it dead, Aaron Brooks would have gotten a face full of 55. Ball start. Offense, number 71. Five yards, it remains third down. Spencer Folau, the right tackle, moved early. The architect of this defense, the Tampa Bay Buck defense, is their defensive coordinator, Monty Kiffin. He was there before John Gruden got there, and he and Rod Marinelli, their defensive line coach, got together in the offseason, realizing they were coming into a division where there was a Michael Vick, who they'll face next week, and an Aaron Brooks, and had to devise ways to be able to control the running of the quarterbacks. I'd say they get A's for their marks in the offseason. Third and long. Four-man rush. Brooks steps up in the pocket this time and rifles one horn wide open. Horn to the five, pushed out of bounds by Rondé Barber. You know what starts this whole thing? The fact that he had time to throw the ball. And when you have time to throw the ball, you're going to find some people open, especially a guy like Joe Horn. And the protection was perfect. He did the thing that they didn't do in the first half. He stepped up into the pocket to deliver the ball. You just can't assume that you can't throw the football against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You have to prove to them it can get done. The linebackers are up around the line of scrimmage, and then they bail. Four-man rush. Good job by the offensive line. Brian Kelly allows Joe Horn to get on top, and they wind up with the big completion. First and goal. McAllister is back in there running gingerly up the middle, and John Lynch just came sailing in from that safety spot and made a tackle. But that one-yard rush gives McAllister 1,000 yards for the season. I personally don't think that the Saints will be able to run the football in. I think Deuce is hurt just enough that he can't make the sudden cut that he needs. A good play action pass right here or get Aaron Brooks on the edge would give him an opportunity. Only one wide receiver and that's Horn. And Brooks throws this one out of the back of the end zone and he is down and Warren Sapp flattened it. And Simeon Rice was right there as well. I mean, the pressure is just relentless from 97 and 99. There was Simeon Rice on the top, Warren Sapp on the bottom. That's like dissecting a person. Now, I talked about him not backing up, but when you've got Warren Sapp coming at you <laughs> and Simeon Rice, Simeon Rice coming from behind you, you really know where to go. Now, third and goal. Duck is good. Floats it over the middle. Touchdown! Caught by Jake Reed. And John Lynch 
Bucks says no way. They're going to review this. There will be a challenge by the Tampa Bay Bucks. I think you challenge it no matter what. The question is, does he have possession with his feet in? Brooks lays it up. He makes the catch. He's got both feet in. Comes down with the ball out of bounds. Touchdown. Touchdown. That's a touchdown. Oh, what a play. Now what? They knocked the ball back into him. He's got the ball. Both feet are down. He's got control of the football. That's touchdown. Even though John Lynch has his hands on it, actually it's Rondé Barber that has his hands on it, it doesn't matter. That's a touchdown. Payton is the guy. His own man knocked the ball back into his chest and helped him catch the football. Does that go into catching in a crowd? Would that fall under that category? And throwing in a crowd? Actually, he led it real well. There was a large group at the back of the end zone for that one. There is no challenge. John Lynch looking to the sideline, and right now there's not going to be. If they snap the ball, there cannot be a challenge. They do, and the point after is good. They saw the same replay we did. Good decision by Tampa Bay not to blow a timeout to challenge a call they weren't going to win. And a good job by New Orleans as they grab the lead over the Bucks. Right now, fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 each way when you purchase by December 12th. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Shook up ramen? Yeah. Soup. Freeze. A call to the library could help her out. Good thing T-Mobile lets her call whenever she wants. Go. It says here, pour some sugar on me. I'm hot, sticky, sweet. Mm -hmm. The most whenever minutes, free long distance enrollment. Only from T-Mobile. Get more. Take all the time you want, folks. We'll take this one in red. Beautiful choice, sir. No. Black. Black. That's actually my favorite color. <laughs> Red. Definitely red. With Microsoft Server Software, you can quickly connect with customers. That's software for the agile business from Microsoft. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. I'll tell you, this is a game of yards. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. Microsoft, makers of software for the agile business. MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard and Walmart. Always low prices, always. Aerial coverage courtesy of Southwest Airlines from the beautiful city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Jake Reed, one of the veterans brought in to give this young team some leadership and big plays as well. He did on that one. Stecker, ball came loose, but it looked like Stecker's progress had been stopped. Let's see how they call it. Okay. We had one of these earlier. I think it's a fumble. I, I believe it's a fumble. Nobody blew a whistle. Now they're talking to each other. Did you blow a whistle? Did you blow a whistle? Did you blow a whistle? Uh -uh. I don't have a whistle. This should be New Orleans football because there was no whistle blown. But they can still determine his forward progress was stopped. That's, I, I don't, we've already had one of those tonight that I sort of bought into, but you're going to have a tough time selling me on a kickoff this All right, one. Let me try to sell you some more. Ready? Listen to me now. I'm listening. <laughs> I tell you what, if there were no whistles blown, this is a fumble. And Steve Gleason is the injured player. Because there was nobody down. I can't wait to hear the explanation. Okay, here we go. There's Stecker. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. He's running. He's running. His he's feet are good. still he's moving. Going forward. His feet are still moving. Ah, is his knee on the ground? You can't tell. Well, they have not made a call on the field yet. Here's another look from a little bit higher. You've got the tackle. 
Can't tell. Covered by New Orleans. First down. And they rule it is a fumble, and the Saints have the football. James Allen covered it. And if Tampa Bay would choose to challenge in this instance, there aren't enough views to be able to call it indisputable evidence to change the call on the field. Certainly nothing that we've seen so far, and John Gruden really upset. I'd say the second one was the one that was close, as if his knee was on the ground. If his knee was down, then he's down. That's the problem I had with the first call on Deuce McAllister saying that his, mo his, uh, his progress had stopped. Right. Stecker was the injured player after that tackle. You saw him get doubled over. Take a look at here now. Can you see a knee if, if he's on the ground? He's actually sitting on James Allen. Well, James Allen had a big part in the first victory for the Saints sure did. when he intercepted a Tom Tupa pass. Now here he is making a big play on the kickoff return. And John Gruden, the least happy person in this building. And Jim Haslett breathes a sigh of relief. This game is huge for the New Orleans Saints, especially in this division where they're chasing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If they win tonight, they would get to within one game of the top and own the tiebreaker because they would have swept the season series. And remember also, Tampa plays Atlanta next week. Hold on a minute, boys. Tampa's offense is back out on the field. They're looking at it. The offense well, has come out. I mean, that's just, I mean, they're, they this, have been, they've been told to go out. This is neat. You've got two offenses on right. the field right now. This is going to be like a, a, a battle of long passes. I'll I, go with Aaron Brooks on that. I agree. I don't think that there is enough to overturn, overturn anything. I like, I like the way John Gruden thinks, though. Put your offense okay. out there. Here is another shot of this thing now. Is he on the ground? Is he down? The ball is, is still there. His, his knee, knee is not on the ground. His knee never hits the ground. That's unbelievable. Allen's arm keeps it from getting to the ground. This is New Orleans ball. It should be. Let's let's not assume that until Mike Carey comes out from under the hood. I'm assuming. You are? Well, I, I, unless you... Well, instead of assuming, you can vote. Log on to ESPN.com or NFL.com. Click on the ETV logo. Watch this replay one more time. Look at his knee. His knee never hits the ground. Actually, it still never hits the ground. It's right on James Allen's forearm. Okay. Well, see, this is to me where I think instant replay has such value in a game. Don't take a game away from somebody. If this don't is, take, can save it. Right. Don't take a play away. After reviewing the play, before the runner's knee hit the ground, the ball came loose. Fumble on the field is correct. First down, New Orleans. Tampa Bay is up. Look out, look out. Charge. Team timeout. So the Bucks lose the ball and a timeout. And this is where I think Aaron Brooks now has to be composed, control what you want to do, and go forward and not make a mistake. Don't try and press it. But don't make a mistake. I agree with you. Touchdown is is just beautiful. But coming out of here with at least a field goal is mandatory. I think you take a shot right here. I think if you're Mike McCarthy, the offensive coordinator of the Saints, you don't hand it off to Deuce. You take a shot. Play action blitz coming, hit from behind, loose ball. And the Bucks got it back, recovered by Greg Spikes after Al Singleton knocked it loose. Simeon Rice. Simeon Rice. I like the call. But boy, did they come around the corner. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the, I called the wrong guy. I saw Simeon Rice in the same position, but that was just outstanding by the linebacker. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Bucks have it back. Now, youth players and coaches can learn football from the NFL with the Junior Player Development Interactive DVD Kit. To register to get your kit, go to NFLYouthFootball.com. 
when you're a star, you can't have a lackluster body or a dull top. So I decided to give the whole works a makeover. So, what do you think? Uh-oh. Better get Mako. Mako repairs the damage and restores the value with everything a body needs. Plus, paint for every budget like the President's Smart Pack for two ninety nine eighty five. Sexy makeover, tiger. I asked the mathletes up to Hunga High to help me with the taste test. Who is she? Relax. Anyway, I've totally reworked my Jumbo Jack. It's a whole lot juicier and bigger overall, but still just 99 cents. I'm so confident it's my best Jumbo Jack ever that if Zach doesn't love it, he can have my yacht with first mate Miss K. Who's good at knots? <laughs> <laughs> Juicy, huh? It rolls. What? You're an honest man. <laughs> Hi there. Yeah, hello. Welcome back to the rightbank.com. From Pacific Continental. We're here to show you the quickest way to see what's behind the right business uh -huh. loan, uh, image checking, online cash management tools. Yeah. yeah, anything you want to look into. It's easy. Yes, it is. You just look into it like this, right? Uh, well, uh, actually, no, it's, it's like this. I had a feeling you were going to say that. You're learning. But not very fast. That's true. It has been a game of big hits and critical turnovers. Tampa Bay has the ball back at its own 33. Pittman behind Allstock. Deuce McAllister having a sore ankle doesn't only affect his running, but also his pass blocking. Watch up to the left. You see from our sky cam, as McAllister goes, he checks inside on Lynch, tries to come back on Singleton, and just really has no way to push out. There it is again, little inside. He can't get that foot to push out to even get a hand on Singleton as he forces the fumble. Somebody rolled up on his ankle earlier in this game, the already sore ankle that kept him out a week ago. Johnson under pressure from behind. He loses the ball. And then Brad Johnson covers up at the 15. Darren Howard, for the second time, came around the corner to shake it loose. Well, we're, you know what we're really seeing? We're seeing so much speed from the outside. Not so much inside, but the outside speed. Does this Defensive ends and linebackers. Does this remind you of the Miami Dolphins Denver, Denver Broncos game, game we did a couple of weeks ago? I mean, terrific job by the people coming around the corners. What's Darren Howard? Look at this. He just blows by Roman Oban, and they had no chance. He's had six sacks in his last seven games. Third and a mile. Pittman stuffed at the 20. Now, I like that call. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> yeah, because I don't... When you when you look at their boards, there's no play for third and 80. Well, against this defense, you know pressure's going to come. So nobody's going to get down the field for 81 yards, right? <laughs> so. Now Tupa will have to punt it away to Michael Lewis. The Saints put a lot of pressure on Tupa in that first game. Oh, nice kick. But returnable. Lewis from the 25. Has the seam. Lewis. Caught from behind by Todd Yoder. And if Yoder doesn't make the tackle, it's a touchdown. As it is, it's a 66-yard return. I'll tell you one thing, though. Tom Tupa did the one smart thing he could do. And as he knows, he would have been beaten to the inside. So what he does is going to force him to the outside, to the middle of the field. Watch this. Tupa right here is going to force him in the middle where he has some help. And that saves the touchdown. And the way Tampa Bay's defense has been playing in the red area, you'd have to give Yoder any kind of an assist if they can come up big here now. That's why you want to never see guys quit on a play. He came a long way to make that tackle. Any bets they come out and run this one? McAllister is still there. Bad ankle and all. And he'll get it from the 20. Trying to pick his way. Not much there. 
Warren Sapp with the tackle. In week six in Washington, the Saints' Michael Lewis became only the seventh player in history to return a punt and a kickoff for a touchdown in the same game. He shook loose for a 90-yard kickoff return, then had a punt return 83 yards in the third quarter. He had 286 total return yards in that game. He's lit it up here today. I mean, we talked about it. Jim Haslett said our special teams are great because we're fast. And he's right. McAllister dives forward to the 14. Lewis is a guy who was a former beer truck driver who played everywhere he could possibly play to get an opportunity. Saw an ad in the paper for tryouts for the Arena League. Did not play in college. And now he's gone from being a beer truck driver and going to every audition you could think of to being one of the most dangerous return men in the game. He delivered beer faster than any human being in America. <laughs> and he replaced a guy here by the name of Chad Morton who's done a pretty good job for the Jets as we turned a couple you of bet. kicks for touchdowns. Big play here, third and four. Brooks rolls away from pressure, throw to the end zone, touchdown! Caught by Joe Horn, and he was wide open. Oh, Brian Kelly took the big bite and got left in the dust. Take it, Paul. You know, when you get out, you roll out to the right hand Joe. side. But look what oh. happens. Look how wide open Horn is because Kelly takes the bike right here. Oh, what a beautiful move. That really is. I mean, there a defensive back is going to grab you and stop you from getting up the field. Joe Horn's strong enough to make the spin move and get in the end zone. That was absolutely perfect execution by Joe Horn. Wide open, Aaron Brooks hit him. And John Carney adds the point after. In a game of huge plays, the third quarter's been full of them. And the Saints have a 20-9 lead. I don't want the city. How romantic. Trip to the city of your choice. Hey, Free. Oh, Free. Come along, boys. Shopping. Free. All right, just a few more blocks. Entertainment. Free. No cats in this one, right? I don't think so. Time with people who make you feel warm and fuzzy. Priceless. Let's go. Drive fast. Use your MasterCard and you could win a getaway with people you're closest to in our priceless memory sweepstakes. We have a wonderful customer here at Walmart who is also the town Santa. He came up with an idea called Ho-Ho Express. Santa raises money throughout the year with help from us here at Walmart. These are children that might not have any presents under the tree. They could spend their money on themselves, but most of the time they buy for their family. I got my mom a candle. It's them being able to put something under the Christmas tree for them to open on Christmas Day when they wouldn't have anything. I believe in Santa. It's just wonderful to give them a Christmas like that. I know he's real. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure or visit us on the web today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. In 1954, Paul Bear Bryant put 115 football players through hell. But those who survived lived to become champions. The Junction Boys, Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Joe Horn getting congratulations on the sideline after that beautiful pattern that he ran and beat one of the best, Brian Kelly. He's over there by that offensive line. He's letting them know how much he appreciates what they did for Aaron Brooks, giving him a chance. And Warren Sapp's looking around going, what has happened to us? This team came in, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, defensively with a lot of swagger. It's a team that averages, averages 11 points a game on defense, but the Saints have scored four balls in two games. The ball's loose again. Fumbled by Dwight Smith, and now the battle is on at the bottom of the pile. 
This is a question of who's stronger at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> you better hope it's a linebacker wrestling for it. No signal Ken, yet. Ken Irvin feels like it's going to be the Saints ball. But Mike Carey says it belongs to the Buccaneers. And Mike Carey would normally win. Man, did that baby come shooting out. Watch, watch how fast this thing comes out. Hit ball. Smith was back there because Aaron Stecker, who's fourth in the league in returns, was injured the last time he had the ball. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily say for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that this is their strong suit to be able to drop back and cheat up chunks of yards. I don't think they have to change their game plan. I think they have to be methodical with 8.49 left in the third quarter and, and work to get two scores. And also remember, the Saints went for a two-point conversion after their first touchdown. In the past, this was a team that could not come from behind. They've done it four times this year when they were down six or more. Brad Johnson, quick throw to McCardell. And McCardell fighting for extra yards to the 41. I want to take you back to that touchdown pass from Aaron Brooks to Joe Horn. There's Joe Horn lined up outside. That's Brian Kelly. He's going to be right in Horn's hip pocket. He starts up, makes a little hook inside, and goes up the field. The thing that's impressive about this is as close as Joe Horn is to the sidelines, Brian Kelly can't force him out. If that was the case, he would not have been able to have a legal catch. 8.16 to go third quarter. All start in at running back. Brad Johnson, short set, complete to McCardell again, his eighth catch of the night, but hit immediately by Charlie Clemens. You know, when you look at this Tampa Bay offense, and, and for years it was always the defense that kept them in the ball games, and we're going to go to the Super Bowl with the defense. Well, this year, you know, the offense with Gruden was going to improve. But the, the biggest improvement in the offense has not been their scoring power. They're not, you know, kicking field goals or anything. Their biggest approval was holding on to the ball, running some clock off, getting their defense some rest, and then maybe getting a field goal. Johnson under pressure again, hit from behind as he throws, and Dilger, the tight end, makes the catch his first grab of the night, but it's another first down. And coming hard from the outside one more time was Darren Howard. And I believe that Ken Dilger can be a big plus for this offense in this game. Take the wide receivers, the corners, and spread them out, and let Dilger be the guy. Last year, he was in the Pro Bowl. Spent seven years in Indy, was unceremoniously let go, and told him they didn't need his services anymore. He's a great blocker, but he has excellent hands. Also can throw the football, given the opportunity. Tampa Bay, two straight first downs. Johnson to throw again. Rifles one, McCardell down to the 34-yard line. His ninth grab of the night. Ken Irvin is in there and 100 yards tonight for Keenan McCardell. You know, you, you don't do anything for two and a half quarters, but you don't get away from what you came in here with. And that's what these guys are doing. They're very patient, Tampa, and just taking now what the Saints are giving them. But I think on this particular play right here, you have to be careful if you're the New Orleans Saints. You don't want to be too aggressive because all you need to do is bring some linebackers. Last time that happened, Mike Allstott went about 45 yards for a touchdown. It's second and inches. They give it to the battering ram, and he dances through trouble to get the first down. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, Keenan McCardle having such a great night tonight and so much a part of this offense. You know what he misses the most? He misses his pal from Jacksonville, Jimmy Smith, and he misses him most during pregame warm-ups. The two would spend time in the locker room, warm up, ride the bike, have deep, long conversations. It's something he doesn't have here with Keyshawn Johnson because they kind of do their own thing. But the one thing they are on the same page about is getting this offense going, and you constantly see them on the sideline talking about things, adjustments they could make. You can tell it works tonight. 
McCardell's been a great addition, Susie. Brad Johnson in trouble. Dumps it underneath, and Jameel Cook drops his pass. That's the second time he has dropped one right in the bread basket. To me, that's got to be one of the more, more frustrating things for a quarterback. Here you are waiting and waiting and waiting. You know you're going to get hammered, and you throw to the only guy that's open, and he doesn't catch it. Well, I'll tell you something about John Gruden. The thing is, is if guys don't start holding on to the football, he's not going to see a whole lot of the football field. Because John's all about production, and he's got enough running backs to rotate through there that you Mill Cook could wind up watching a lot of football. The Bucks have done a better job protecting Brad Johnson tonight than they did in the first meeting, but he's still getting hit. And this one is wide of Keyshawn Johnson with Ken Irvin on it. Keyshawn was open. He had Carter on him, but Keyshawn was open. That ball was thrown just a, it's a tad too, too wide. Here it comes. Watch this. He goes to the inside. That's Kenny Irvin on I'm sorry. But Keyshawn, that ball could have been caught had it been in his hands. It was way too far outside. Big third down for both. I think the Bucks offensively, they've got to figure out a way to keep this drive alive. They have only converted one out of eight third downs tonight. Brad Johnson, here comes the rush. Throws back against oh. the grain, and McCardell nearly made a sensational catch. How Cedric Hodge, number 52, didn't get a hand on that shocks me. Brad Johnson making the cardinal sin, throwing back into the middle of the field. You should never do this. Cedric Hodge is up four miles, and Keenan McCardell almost makes a spectacular one-handed reception. He's ex it's expected to get hit, I think. Now Gramatica, who is four out of five from 50 yards or longer, will try a 51-yarder. He missed from 48 earlier. This one is drilled, and it's good. 20 to 12, 504 to go, third quarter from New Orleans. The Saints have cut their lead. 20 to 12 now down to eight points and the Buccaneers came in with a nine and two record the best in the league Atlanta hot on their heels New Orleans must win this game to give themselves a shot at the division Atlanta and New Orleans incidentally the only two teams in the NFC outside of the division leaders who are over 500 Lewis the deep man from the eight has to duck under a tackle and goes down at the 15. Jermaine Phillips flying down on special teams. Timeout on the field, five minutes left, third quarter. It's an eight-point game. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. If the only obstacles you ever encounter are speed bumps, if you've never used mud as toothpaste, get out of the way. Everybody's talking up the Quadrunner Vincent 500 from Suzuki. And now that a brand new Vincent with a manual transmission has arrived, who knows when they'll stop. The Suzuki Vincent. Get out of the way. message is clear. Don't pay twice as much for the same internet. Juno gives you all the internet for half the price. Call 877-only-995 or get it at Juno.com. Additional phone charges may apply. Hello, Moto. ABC Tuesday's Love at First Sight Night. Cool. See how it all began. No, 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 no. The very first episodes of Eight Simple Rules and According to Jim. God, you're beautiful. God, you're a lucky man. ABC Tuesday starting 8, 7 central. It's been strength against strength tonight. The Saints, the league's second leading 
point producer against the best defense against scoring in the NFL. And right now, the Saints offense has exploded for 14 points in the third quarter to take over. They start this time from the 10. Brooks airing one out. And no flag. Rondé Barber had great position, and he was just run over. Oh, he gets tripped. Yeah, they, they will never call this no. on, on a wide receiver because what's happening is both guys are looking at the ball. Look at Joe Horn. He's, lo he's looking back at the ball. He doesn't know now where Rondé Barber is. He trips and falls over him. That's not pass interference. Just looking at the ball doesn't give you an excuse to run no, somebody over. No, but he trips, and when he trips, he goes down. I like the call. Incidental contact. I like the call. I do, too. I like Mike the, no, the non -call. call, the offensive coordinator. I, I like the non-call by the official, and I like the call by the offensive coordinator. Now, Aaron Brooks having a discussion with the officials. And a timeout called by New Orleans, and Brooks will go to the sideline. It was unusual. Yeah. Didn't look like there was a communication problem with the time or anything. Aaron Brooks is one of those jovial, jolly young quarterbacks in this league who uh, really, really has relied on Joe Horn's ability to be able to be the mature, solid force. He's the only receiver he had back last year. He seemed so frustrated when we talked to him on Friday. Just didn't feel like he was a big enough part of the offense. He wants to be because he's a big-time player, an all-pro, and he's proven it tonight. Four receptions, 96 yards, and a TD. Well, he's a guy who waited a long time for a shot, played two years in the CFL. He was a four-year reserve at Kansas City where he rarely got onto the field. He comes here, and he's gone to the last two Pro Bowls and should go again. Second and ten. Brooks. Sap chasing him, throws on the run, incomplete. Just got rid of that one. Simeon and Warren chasing him down. <laughs> and Warren gives the slap to Brooks. What? <laughs> Look at Warren Sap. You talk about a guy whose machine never stops. He says everybody has, every good defense has to have a motor. Well, look at this motor. This motor never wears down. He goes, by, he goes right by the Charles Bentley, the rookie, who did a pretty good job on him before. See, now he's added the division with Brett Favre. So Aaron Brooks now becomes his new best buddy to That's talk right. during games. Third and ten for the Saints. Four-man rush unloads to Reed. Jackson missed him and Reed up to the 45-yard line. A gain of 29. You know, is it nice or is it not nice to have an experienced receiver? It's great to have a couple of experienced receivers. Watch Aaron Brooks' head. He's going to look right. He looks right now, comes back, and with a lot of confidence, fires the ball right over John Lynch's shoulder. Watch his head. He's looking right, looking right. He knows where Jake's going to be. Fires it right in behind John Lynch. Nice and decisive with the football. And a good adjustment by Reed on a ball that was behind him. McAllister. Straight ahead. Breaks the tackle. Room to run. And McAllister picks up almost 10. Deuce is just playing on pure guts right now. Isn't he? I mean, this to me, this is a statement game for this young man. They know that they counted on him the last couple of weeks. He wasn't a part of the offense. It's this kind of toughness that they need. He runs right up the middle on Shelton Quarles, breaks the tackle. Simeon Rice is there, can't get him down. The one advantage New Orleans has up front is the size and strength of that offensive line. Tampa Bay, for all their tremendous pursuit and speed, is a smallish defense, especially without Anthony McFarland, who's been out injured. He'll be back next week. Paul brought up a great point before. The biggest thing that the offense of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has done is it has allowed that defense to get off the field. Jim Haslett's ball club tonight, offensively, is not letting that happen. They're they're going to wear down this Tampa defense if they can continue to pound it up the middle. They've already gained more in the third quarter than they did the entire first half. And a good mix of run and pass. Brooks with all day to throw. Then two a high to McAllister, who was all alone in the flat. 
Jim Haslett said that he wanted to pound the ball up the middle, running the football. He felt like that was the advantage that his football team would have. You look at that, 11 for 56 up the middle. 11 carries to the right, to the left. That's where the production has come. McAllister cracked the 1,000-yard barrier for the first time in his career early in this game. One of the other reasons why they're running up the middle is because Deuce can't cut. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. That's a lot easier to go straight ahead. Certainly not healed as yet. McAllister on the delay, only a couple to the Buccaneers' 43. Now, this is not a point in the game where the New Orleans Saints, where people might think, okay, run some time off the clock. Let's not see that. No. Keep on pounding. Keep on going after them. Make them chase you around. Wear them out. Big third down here by the Saints. It'll really, really put some stress on that Tampa defense. Amazingly, they have converted 7 out of 12 third downs tonight against the best defense in the league. Buck show blitz. Here they come. Saints pick it up beautifully, but the pass is incomplete. Intended for Horn. He was covered man for man by Rondé Barber. That was a duck. Oh, yeah, but Aaron Brooks knows he's got Jerome Payton crossing if he could have waited just a little bit longer. And you talked about him throwing some ducks. He's got a problem with his shoulder. He cannot get that right arm up to snap or unsnap the chin strap on that helmet. This kid's playing hurt right now, which means if he did have to come out, Jake DeLome would be the guy to go in. Carl Williams is back to receive the punt from Toby Gowen. Fair catch made at the 14-yard line. Let's check in with Susie Goldman. Well, Mike, when the Saints lost 3 of 4, everyone started talking, is the same thing going to happen this year as happened last year? Well, Grady Jackson, defensive tackle, came over from the Raiders, says no way. He knows. He was with the Raiders. They had a skid in 98, 2001. But he said, you know what? It's like building a house. Sometime it's going to rain. It's going to impede your progress. You just have to relax, wait for the rain to stop, and you can get back to it. They are back to working again. They say they're going to finish this project, get the house built. First step tonight. Well, Susie, unless you live in Cincinnati, then when it rains, your roof leaks. <laughs> you know, the Bucks have only rushed for 32 yards. Their lowest of season was 63. Johnson back to throw. Rifles went a little wide of Keyshawn, and he couldn't make the catch. Keyshawn looks right back at him and says, why are you leading me in there? Let's talk for just a second about this offense. We know that they don't have an awful lot of speed. But they've only tried one time, and that was in the first quarter, to Keenan McCardle to down the field. Everything else has been a five-yard to an eight-yard pattern. I think part of it is by design, Paul. The other part is, is Brad Johnson, if you think of these two games, just hasn't had the time to stand there to allow a receiver to get any depth in his route. Three wide receivers on second and ten. The Saints defense has done a great job in the second half. Allstott hit and pushed back. You don't see that very often. Cedric Hodge and Darren Howard combined to take the jackhammer and push him back. I'll tell you when you do see it is when you see these two guys going full speed up the field. Watch, watch the hit here. Bang! And that's knocked backwards. Now, when you're knocked backwards, that's Hodge. Now you got other people have a chance to make the play. Howard, number 93, is the other guy that makes the play. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't happen often. In fact, we actually did gain almost a yard and a half. It's like running into a cement truck. Brad Johnson is waiting for the Saints to set up so he can call an audible. They're just standing around. Blitz coming. Johnson unloads. The catch is made, but it will be short of the first down. Jared Vicious tackled by Ken Irvin. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Brad Johnson stood at the line of scrimmage waiting for the Saints to go somewhere so he could call a play, and all they did was talk to one another until he got down to four seconds on the play on the clock. There's Rick Venturi, the defensive coordinator, telling his guys, great job. Lewis now, who's had another big night, waits back inside his 35. Two put a punt. Time winding down in the third quarter. 
Another line drive returnable kick, and it takes a big bounce for the Bucks Inside the 10, they will down it at the 7. A mistake there by Lewis, who let it go, and it results in a 70-yard punt for Tom Tupa. Tuesday night on ESPN, an ACC Big Ten Challenge, the college basketball doubleheader featuring Duke and Ohio State, then at 9 Eastern, a national championship rematch, Maryland against Indiana. Duke with those four McDonald All-American freshmen. J.J. Redick had 20 points as Duke beat UCLA yesterday. What do you figure, a year? A year till they, they win it again? I never wait on Mike Krzyzewski. I think he thinks this year, every year. Well, you don't have to wait on taking a look at what the quarterbacks have done either. Brad Johnson, Aaron Brooks, Johnson up to 30 throws. Remember, he threw 50-plus in the first game. And Aaron Brooks being very, very good with his throws. He's thrown the ball away a couple of times, made some good decisions with it. Only 9 for 23, but he does have the two touchdowns. Really came back from that uh, early test when he was being pressured every pass. McAllister on the toss. Cuts it back across the 10. Lynch hits him, but he lunges forward to the 17-yard line. Heck of a run by McAllister. And that will be a first down for the Saints on the last play of the third quarter. It's 20-12, New Orleans. Monday Night Countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Delivered by UPS. Introducing Dockers. Flat front mobile pants. Nice pants. What do you care? You've got the goodness of Reese's peanut butter and milk chocolate. Get lost in a Reese's. My kids ignore me. My dog ignores me. And now, my remote ignores me. Talk to LiftMaster and get the world's number one professionally installed garage door opener. Contact LiftMaster now. Okay, sir, here's your Avis care package with local information, traffic rules, and a map. What would it be like if Avis didn't try hard -er? Did Did Brad ask about me? Well, Do you have a map? Gonna... I gave you a map. Uh-huh. Uh, no, you okay. didn't. I never... Yes, I did. No, I... No way that I was going to give you a map. I never got a... Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Can I have another map? No. Okay. If we didn't try harder, we wouldn't be Avis. The Avis care package. Thanks. Give us a call. The number one movie of the year is now the ultimate adventure that comes to life on a two-disc special edition DVD. Who are you? I'm Spider-Man. With Spider-Rific Extras. Spider-Man, also available in a limited edition gift set. Buy it now on DVD and video. In the first half, it was a Tampa Bay kind of game. 9-6 at the half, but that Saints offense couldn't be held down forever, just like the first game. They had an explosion, got 14 points in the third quarter, and now they have a lead. The question is, can Tampa Bay's offense, as limited as it can be, can they come back in the fourth quarter? I think it'll be tough for them, but the thing that I'm most impressed with is Mike McCarthy, the offensive coordinator of the Saints, has decided to stay aggressive. That's why they were the number two scoring team team in football. He didn't assume that Tampa was the number one defense. They just went after him. You know, the other thing is that they, they someone should have told Deuce McAllister that he's hurt. <laughs> because he doesn't realize it. I mean, when you look at the runs he makes, and he'll limp back into the huddle. But he's out there. He knows how important this ball game is to this, to this football team. And he's going to stay out there. Showing an awful lot of courage tonight. 18 carries, 79 yards against the best defense in the game. Aaron Brooks does have a slight bruised bicep on his right arm. You'll notice he carries it when he's not using it to fling the ball down the field. Well, as much money as he's making, they got to have somebody carry it for him. Well, he, he keeps it bent and he can't lift it up, so we'll see how it goes. Rice has been quiet lately after a first half burst. It's on get three sacks and a forced fumble that resulted in the safety. McAllister again just hammering his way up the middle. Stopped by Quarles and Lynch. 
This is not what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers want to see. They're not real big up front. Chardick Darby's 270, Warren Sapp goes at 300, but then you get to the outside with Rice and Spires. They're both right around 265. And the linebackers are only 230. New Orleans just letting the guys up front clear the way for Deuce. Second and five. McAllister moves the pile about a yard shy of the first down. And, Joe, you mentioned that offensive line. Jerry Fontenot, the center, is the only one back in the same spot. Kyle Turley is the only other starter back, and they moved him from the right side to the left side. And when, when you look at it, Kendall Jaycock, the left ta left guard, uh, LaCharles Bentley, the rookie out of OSU, uh, Spencer Falau, the right tackle, and David Sloan, they're all brand new to the offense. Third and one. McAllister. Dives forward. That depends on the mark just outside of the 27. More on Deuce McAllister from Susie. Mike, every Friday of practice, Deuce makes a prediction on how he's going to perform that Sunday, and he shares it with one person, Coach Haslett. He say it's the way it motivates himself. He likes to have the same kind of numbers, the season total, something to fight for throughout the season, like their rushing record or being the top five in rushing league-wide. He said he's got that me-against-the-world attitude. He wants to show everyone it was a bad Bad decision not to draft him. You can certainly see why. <laughs> Well, you know, Susie, he had that minor history uh, or uh, injury history at Ole Miss, and that's why some of the teams backed off on him, but the Saints didn't. And they were criticized heavily when they drafted him after already having Ricky Williams. Here's the measurement for the first down, and they've got it. So as it turned out, they had two outstanding running backs, decided to give Ricky Williams up to the Miami Dolphins in a trade. But let's give this guy a lot of credit because, first of all, Tampa knew he was hurt. New Orleans definitely, you know, when we talked to Hazlitt, Hazlitt goes, oh, yeah, he's going to play. But you see the reluctancy in his voice when he's, when he's talking about it. And here's a young man that's come out here, and I'm going to tell you, he's taking a pounding, but he's getting results. McAllister this time on the toss. Chased down nah. by Chartrick Darby. That's and we mentioned the trade. The Saints now have at least a number two draft choice this coming year because Ricky Williams went over the 1,250 yard mark in rushing. He's got a great shot at 1,500, which would give them a number one. Jim Haslett says, I'm rooting for him. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ricky, 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 to me, has matured so much, and it, he's been such a big part and will be a big part of what the Dolphins are going to do down the stretch as well. Second and 11 after the loss of a yard on first down. McAllister again. Boy, running hard. <laughs> Well, you just saw two tough guys run into one another. Dexter Jackson, number 34, and Deuce McAllister. Watch Deuce McAllister when he hits the 30-yard line. He's going to hit the 30-yard line, and they're going to knock him back. Not here, right about now. And bang, he's back to the 30. Watch where they spot the ball. The ball is spotted at the 32. You talk about continuous effort. He's left it all out there. Another big third down. The Saints just trying to work on the clock. Fenderson is in for McAllister. Joe Horn's the guy that's been the guy he wants. Pressure up the middle. The pass underneath. Incomplete. And incomplete because of Derek Brooks. That one squeezed right through James Fenderson's hands like it was a banana. Well, you're in the fourth quarter. This guy has not touched the ball all night long. <laughs> well, a short bullet. And he got his clock clean, too. <laughs> yeah. Carl Williams. Carl Williams, who has taken five to the house on punt returns in his career. Nice kick. Williams driven back to the 22. There's that speed Jim Haslett talked about on his special team. They do a great job of covering Mel Mitchell, the first man down. But he had plenty of help, and they swarmed over Williams. Fourth quarter from New Orleans, 11-31 to go. It's an eight-point game.
Danny sets me up on this blind date with this girl, Angela. And I'm thinking, oh, she's a little shy. She gets up and <laughs> starts stage. shaking it. Right in front of the table. So she says, take me to Vegas. What? We're having the time of our lives. It's kind of getting hot, kind of getting dirty. She's got this sexy tattoo with a knife piercing a heart. Wait a minute. Angela? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's my sister. <laughs> Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Light at a place called Miller Time. That's so funny. And now December's here, and so I face a shopping frenzy. Send me a value selection and cheese. Hard to find gifts like this tea tray. All in all, it beats the mall when you do it. Deep. Sunday Night Football, brought to you by Miller Lite. Life is best told at a place called Miller Time. eBay, the world's online marketplace, and Mazda. Log on to Enhanced TV at ESPN.com for a chance to win a Mazda 6 sports sedan and other great prizes. The heart of the French Quarter and Bourbon Street. If you can't find it there, it's not worth looking for. Just a beautiful city to come to. The Bucks need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. Johnson under pressure, hit as he throws, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jay Bellamy, the free safety, his third interception of the season. Brad Johnson couldn't get it out before he was hit. You know what you're seeing is you're, so, you're, you're looking at defenses on both sides that just won't quit. Watch how much time. Now, they don't quit. They just keep coming, and they keep coming, and finally they get a piece of, of Brad Johnson, and then they get the interception. That ball just squirts out. Keyshawn Johnson trying to, trying to come up and knock the ball away from Bellamy. But again, big pressure. And I think what you're seeing is you're seeing a fresh defense with the New Orleans Saints bringing pressure versus one that's tired. And after that last series, every one of those Tampa Bay defenders went onto the bench and sat down trying to get some air. Now they're right back on the field again. Brad Johnson's first interception and his first since October. McAllister. Warren sap with the tackle. Well, you know, you t we were talking about that great number one defense of Tampa Bay, but you take a look at this New Orleans defense and putting some pressure. I mean, the, really, when you look at no name, <laughs> there aren't a lot of real big names on this team, but watch these guys. None of them. They don't slow down. And these are big people you're talking about. We're not talking about little guys. You know, Norman Hand is huge, number 99. Look at these guys, and they're happy. They're it smiling. It isn't the sacks on Brad Johnson. It's just the hits that yeah. accumulate. Already in field goal range. McAllister on a little toss, cuts it back, nice move. And then swarmed under as he caught shy of the 30. Shelton Quarles and Simeon Rice were there. Warren Sapp couldn't get him in the backfield. Now that shot. He can make that cut going left because his right ankle is the problem. Watch this. He's got a chance to cut. Bang, off his left ankle. Now he tries to turn it up north and south and winds up with a modest gain. Going right. Would not be able to do that. From here, it would be a 47-yard field goal try. What do you call on third and seven? I think Aaron Brooks is smart. And if he doesn't like what he sees, take off and run. Blitz coming. Brooks throws on the run and throws it way over Joe Horn's head. And that's his arm. See how he's holding his arm? He's, that, that right arm is literally just hanging. 
They so did. your quarterback is hurt and your running back is hurt, and you still lead by eight against the best defense in the league. Well, you've got to hope to get more out of your running game, and I think you have to shorten the passes. But look at the way he's coming off the field. That arm is just dangling. If they did have him in the right situation, they did roll him out to give him some room to throw the ball and to not take a sack. And Joe Horn was open. Carney will try from 48. He missed wide left from 48 earlier. This one is true. 23-12. The Saints extend their lead to two scores with 9.47 left in the ballgame. And the Bucks defense couldn't keep them off the scoreboard. Tonight on Sports Center, a fearless leader. I'm good, son. I'm an easy find. Who's also human? I'm a dirty player. Wow. Warren Sapp reveals all. Sports Center after the game on ESPN. Why is Brad's a better place to buy? It's all about the difference. Check out this 5.3 V8 2000 Chevy Silverado Z71, now just $23,990. Here's a 99 Ford F-250 Super Duty Power Stroke, Brad's price $28,990. A loaded 99 Dodge Dakota Club Cab with low miles, now $16,990. And this 94 Nissan XE King Cab 4x4 with air, just $7,990. Experience the difference today at Brad's. A better place to buy. My husband and I love our home theater system. It looks and it sounds great. Just a few weeks ago, we were looking on the internet, we were looking at all of the big stores. We were overwhelmed and confused. Then we went to Ronnie Stereo. He explained everything. His prices were very competitive, and he even came to our house to better understand what we needed. Ronnie and his staff made this experience very rewarding. So this holiday season, I would strongly recommend Ronnie Stereo for all of your home theater and stereo needs. Hi there. Hello. This is the RightBank.com. Online home of the Pacific Continental Bank double whammy. You know, friendly, down-to-earth people on the one hand. And incredibly sophisticated online banking on the other. To find out more, right. come visit us in person. Or just move that cursor to online banking right. and give it a click. Uh-huh, just give it... Oh, Rick, Rick is that smart. Now you know why they call it a cursor. I did not see that coming. John Gruden and the Buccaneers battling history. They have never won a road game when they were down by 10 points in the second half. Right now, they're down by 11. Carl Williams and Corey Ivey are deep. Williams. Cut down at the 16-yard line. Kramer, a backup defensive back with a tremendous tackle on special teams. The Saints have taken control in the second half and lead the Buccaneers 23-12 at home in a game they have to win. Buy, appropriate, destroy, and eliminate to ensure that American freedoms are protected. If captured, my leaders will disavow any knowledge of my existence. I am Sam Fisher. I am a splinter cell. For infiltration, there is no power greater than X. Sorry. It's okay. Tim here is on his first date, and his family has some advice. With T-Mobile, families can talk all they want. Bo. Hello? Let her win. Hello? Tell her she smells nice. Hello? Does she come from money? Hello? Does she have a sister? Wrong number. Families talk free. Additional lines, just $10. Only from T-Mobile. Get more.
one day you find you're up to your waist in it. If being in it buys one more day on top of it, fill up the tub. Fill up the tub. The Saints, with a sparkling second half, have taken a 23-12 lead over Tampa Bay. Brad Johnson goes down, and that will be the easiest sack the Saints will get all night. He was tripped up by one of his offensive linemen, Cozy Coleman. John Gruden was brought in because he was the offensive guru, or guru. But Gru hasn't gotten it done. Because when you take a look at under Dungy, they were 15th in points, tied for 26th, rushing was 30th, 15th. You see under Gruden, this offense has not been able to jump out. And I think in this game, it's a lot to do with players and some to do with systems. You can't change the personnel overnight. Pittman out of the backfield. And Pittman out to the 27-yard line. He's always been a very good receiver. Fred Thomas in on the tackle. John Gruden, I believe, will get this offense at a, pro a highly productive level. But as Brad Johnson told us, it takes three years for everybody to understand what's going on. And in that three-year period, he will get some players, and he will be able to be a more productive offense. I believe they made the right choice, and they're going in the right direction. Well, it's obvious they need some speed on the outside. They need some help on the offensive line as well. Johnson to Pittman, and Pittman nailed this time by Darren Smith. Smith, the leading tackler on the Saints defense, always been a great cover guy. You know, when you take a look at it, watch, here's a little dump pass to Pittman. Watch Smith. Bang. Helmet to helmet. Got these guys lined up. The one thing about looking at this New Orleans Saints defensive team and their special teams, what these guys do is when the ball is in the air or it's on the ground, they break down. They're ready to make a play. They don't overcommit themselves. Johnson to Pittman in the flat, gets out of bounds. Let's check in with Susan. Well, Mike, those injury woes for the, for the Saints continue. Aaron Brooks, a bruised bicep. They say too sore to throw the ball. They packed him in ice. He's done for the night. Jake Delhomme comes in. We know Deuce McAllister already hurting. Dale Carter, quarterback, left the golden train. He's in street clothes, obviously. He's done for the night. This defense has been hit by injuries all season. We'll see if they can overcome it all tonight. All right, Susie, thank you. It is deafening in here on third and six. Johnson to Keyshawn at the sideline, 45-yard line, first down. That was a nice throw by Brad Johnson. He saw Keyshawn wasn't get, going to get behind anybody and threw it short. Craver is the one that they pick on, number 43. This is just terrific timing between a quarterback and a wide receiver. It's a stop route. He just throws to his back shoulder. Watch this. Keyshawn knows where it's going. Craver can't find him. Does a terrific job of getting his feet down. The first catch by the three-time Pro Bowler in this half. Pressure coming from behind. Johnson throws as he goes down. Darren Howard off the corner again. They own Roman Oban over there. Oh, they do. And, and the one thing that happens on it, when you're coming around the corner, Darren Howard, watch how he'll dip coming around. Down, 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 and he goes right down to the legs of Brad Johnson. That's the one difference for John Gruden without Rich Gannon. Rich Gannon had the mobility to be able to run and pick up plays with his legs. Brad Johnson will hang in the pocket, but he's not going to do a lot for you when it comes to tucking it down, down and running. Well, especially when they come from the blind side at 100 miles an hour. Look out. Straight up the middle this time. They set up the screen, and Pittman drops it. Pittman's dropped one. Jameel Cook, the backup fullback, has dropped a couple. Michael, it wouldn't have worked anyway. They were there waiting. <laughs> there were as many black shirts there, and there were white shirts. So that screen wouldn't have worked anyway. Rick Venturi, the defensive coordinator of the Saints, said that we have to be aggressive and we have to tackle well tonight. And that's exactly what they've done. The, the defense of the Bucks has struggled with it. 
Jim Haslett, the former All-Pro linebacker, watching his defense do the job right now. And the Bucks are going to have to use one of those valuable timeouts with 6.40 to go on the clock. Tonight on SportsCenter, a fearless leader. I'm get some. I'm an easy fire. Who's also human? I'm a dirty player. Wow. Warren Sapp reveals all. Sports Center after the game on ESPN. Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Stereo, and I'd like to wish each and every one of you a very happy and safe holiday season. If you're in the market for a home stereo, car stereo, or any type of electronics product for yourself or a friend, come see me this holiday season. We guarantee only the best products, and of course, our prices are always competitive. If you don't shop at Ronnie's Stereo, you'll probably pay too much, and you may not even get the right gift. So come see me at Ronnie's Stereo. We're in Delta Oak Shopping Center near G.I. Joe's. You claim to be bigger, better, and faster. You've got to back it up. The Toyota Camry at your Northwest Toyota dealer backs up being number one over and over again. Like Camry versus Accord. More room, goes further, holds more with a longer warranty. Toyota Camry, the best-selling car for out of the past five years. And right now, get 0% financing for 36 months. Only at your Northwest Toyota dealer. Now at Lithia Toyota and Romania Toyota. Get the feeling. Toyota. Don't pay retail when you can get the best mattress for less right at the factory. Come to Rest Easy Mattress Factory in Springfield and compare. Rest Easy mattresses are built by local experienced craftsmen. They attend to every detail. They put together a long-lasting, comfortable mattress. Quality work for truly factory direct prices. You may have heard about the newest in comfort. Rest Easy also makes the Viscopedic mattress with memory foam. On South 14th in Springfield, buy a mattress today, rest easy tonight. Sports Center coming up with Stuart Scott and Linda Cohn, NFL upset special, Sap unplugged, and Kobe against Kevin Garnett. All of that and more on Sports Center. Third and long. Underneath to McCardell, a flag is down. He did not get the first down, reached the 49-yard line. They're going to get a holding on Coleman, I would think. They were holding Charles Grant. I'll tell you why I'd take this penalty. Because it's third and four. You got six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. For all intent and purposes, the Bucks. Well, if, it, if they take the penalty, you make it third and long. If you don't, you make it fourth and four. And they're in four down territory, so I would accept the penalty if I was the Saints. And this is not a 20-yard per play offense. Exactly. And when your defense is playing this well, I agree with Joseph. Very rarely do I do that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I mean, you well, just say that. I did that. I did it once in Austin, number 67 is declined. I don't agree with that call. I do not agree with that call at this point. Well, there's two, two thoughts of it. First of all, his defense is playing so well. Jim yep. Hassan's defense playing so well. And they haven't been able to do much. But they have been able to complete some short passes. See, I just think that if you go back and put them at third down and 20, and you also move them back, you're in a better position than giving them fourth and four in midfield. Fourth and four certainly gives them a shot at keeping the drive alive. They need two scores. It's what their offense is better suited for. Johnson underneath. That's the first down to Jaravicious as he reaches the 38-yard line. And I so think, the gamble backfires. Well, I think what has to happen now is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have to go to a hurry-up style of offense. Or at least get the pace going pretty quick. I just thought that with the type of offense the Bucs have, yardage is an enemy to them. Great yardage is an enemy. And that's why I think Jim Haslett would have been better off taking the penalty. Draw play to Pittman. That one goes absolutely nowhere. And on the bottom of the pile is Cedric Hodge, the weak side linebacker who's had some big plays tonight. 
They haven't had a draw play work tonight, though. I mean, you know, we, we talked about this before in the first half with a minute and 30 some seconds you run a draw. You got, I know you got five minutes, but you got the clock moving. He, he makes the clock move. You got all these other things that are wrong with it. An incomplete saves you a little time. And plus, you're trying to move out Brady Jackson and Norman Hand. <laughs> Johnson hit again as he throws, and the ball is tipped on top of it. All right, we had some turnovers tonight that really hurt the Bucks. Here's Johnson's fumble. Tecker on a kick return. Look, his ball comes out. And here comes an interception. Jay Bellamy picks this one off. But it's been the pressure by that defensive line that has created a lot of the opportunities and has stymied this Bucks offense. Third and nine, and the Saints' pass rush has been ferocious. They come on the blitz this time. Johnson unloads, and Gerald Vicious dropped it. Wide open. But I tell you what, if you're a quarterback, you start to get really upset when you stand in there and just get your face handed to you about every other time you drop back and guys won't catch the ball. Especially at a crucial point in the game. But this doesn't really hurt him because it's only third and nine. Brad Johnson finally doesn't get hit, and Jura Vicious just takes his eyes off. Yeah, but look where he has to throw the ball over. Watch 91, Grady Jackson. Take this all the way back to the quarterback. Look at here. He's right back at his face. They converted the last fourth down. This is fourth and nine. Johnson throws, and Keyshawn has it at the 20. That's why it's that, down. That's why that drop wasn't as critical as the decision by Jim Haslett not to set them back. As long as I think the Bucks are within 10 yards, it's a manageable offense to pick up first downs. Keyshawn Johnson working from the outside just swings in the middle, and... Ken Irvin has to make the play. There's Derek Brooks and Warren Sapp, the perennial All-Pros, cheering their offense on. Four-man rush. Johnson for the end zone. Keyshawn can't get there, but a flag down. That would be first and goal at the one if it's against Ken Irvin. Well, that isn't much. I think it's just, it's incidental contact. They, well, no, he's no. holding onto his shirt. That's a good call by the official. In, incidental shirt holding. Yeah, well, he grabbed onto his shirt. I mean, he was in good position. And remember, Ken Irvin is playing now because Dale Carter got hurt. Enter Mike Allstott, first and goal from the one. No. Allstott submarined and he didn't make it. That's Four. worth 30, 35 seconds. You know what? If I got Allstott, I know their offense is geared with Cook being in front of him. But as big as Allstott is, see, if Cook gets blocked in the hole, Allstott really has no place to go. Get those people out of his way. Let, just let the defensive lineman block and let Allstott blow it up. And if you can lip read, you saw John Gruden urging his team to hurry up just a little. Brad Johnson looking for Dilger, and Dilger goes down. He just tried to turn and face the quarterback and fell down. Brad Johnson hesitated. Dilger was open early, but I can only tell you from a quarterback's perspective, sometimes they get caught behind the lineman, and you can't see him. Dilger's going to come across the route and wind up wide open early. Now they bring in Big Thunder, number 99, as the fullback. This will be the 16th play of this drive. Warren Sapp is up on the left end position. Third and goal, all stop. He won't no. get there. Can you believe this? 
What a stand by New Orleans defense. You kick a field goal here now because you need two scores anyway. You know what? I think you made these people mad, Joseph, because you told them that the number one defense was coming to town. You did too. Don't put it on me. <laughs> and watch this defense. Who's number one tonight? You know, it boils down to winning the offensive line. You win the line of scrimmage down around the goal line, you're going to get in the end zone. They're bringing all the or receivers in now. They're not. No field goal try. Don't like this decision either. Brad Johnson to the end zone, out in the flat, touchdown! Okay. McCardell! They will not call offensive pass interference if it kills him. He got away with one, though, didn't he? Of course he did. Every receiver does it. If I was a receiver in the National Football League, I would practice pushing off defensive backs. And, they and have, now they're going to go for two, and if they get it, a field goal would tie it. They have to go for two. Boy, this is a, a first of all, this is a tremendous throw. Yep. And I don't know how you're that wide open. A little bit of a stop fade, the same thing we saw Keyshawn Johnson catch on the sidelines. McCardell, 11 catches, 107 yards, and a touchdown. The two point conversion would make it a field goal lead. Otherwise, the Bucks would need a touchdown. Brad Johnson to Keyshawn, and they got the two. Now it will be up to Tampa Bay's defense to stop the New Orleans offense with an injured Deuce McAllister and Aaron Brooks presumably out at quarterback. You know why this works. Watch Bellamy in the end zone. Watch number 20. He's got his back to the ball. He can't see the ball coming. So they throw it to Keyshawn. That's a great point, Paul. Number 20 is sitting there looking at Keyshawn. He starts to come across and then stops. Good recognition by Brad Johnson as well. Boy, it sure was. If you look down there and see that guy, you can't throw it to his back. You've got to throw it in the opening, and he did. I want to take you back early in this game. This is a two-point conversion attempt by the New Orleans Saints after they scored a touchdown to make the score 6-2. to two. I didn't understand why they tried it at that point. I still don't understand why they tried it. Now they would have a four-point lead, conceivably, if the game had gone the way it has. Instead, now Tampa Bay is within a field goal. Well, all teams have that chart that recommends that if you're up by X, you uh, go for two. Take that chart. If you're up by Y, you go for one. Hey, take you that, know, take like the that chart. chart. Take I can tell the you chart, you, pal. I can tell you, where you, to me, <laughs> I think you have to play this game on feel a little bit. And if you score in the first quarter, I don't understand what going for two points does for you, even if the other team has two points. Now, Tampa Bay has two timeouts left and the two-minute warning. One timeout left in the two-minute warning. So do you go for the onside kick here? New Orleans I don't think so. Do. I think you kick this thing away. you, you got to remember, they're putting Jake DeLome in. They're putting their backup quarterback in. Now, if he plays like other backup quarterbacks have, the Bucks are in trouble because a That's lot of right. guys have done well. But you take your chances, I believe. Well, the Bucks lost one of their timeouts on a challenge. So there is only one left. There's a flag down. Delay a game against, <laughs> against Tampa on the kickoff. 35 yard line. 25 yard line. That may have come from trying to figure out what you were going to do. Kick it away or go for the onside kick, but it cost them five yards. Well, Tampa stood on the 20-yard line, bunched for a long period of time. And the 25-second clock is going to run. Well, once the referee winds it down here at the end zone on the right-hand side, away from the kicking team, once he winds it, you've got that amount of time, 25 seconds, to kick the ball off. Well, they were just standing around. They had to lay a game, and they called. That's the first time I've ever seen this. Me too. Well, we get first on Sunday nights all the time, don't we? <laughs> we do. We, we're first at everything. This, but this is the first time I've ever seen something happen when the ball hasn't been moving. <laughs> it's just, and neither of the players. Everybody's standing still, and there's a penalty. And now the Saints will drop back more people and only keep four up front. Well, yeah, he's going to kick it. 
of hard to onside kick the ball when it's straight up and down like if, that. If you're any of the front guys on this kickoff receiving team, you don't move until you see that ball in the air. Now they add two more, and they have six on the front line. Grammatica kicks it away. Lewis from the six. Nice kickoff. Lewis with that great speed. Caught it to 15 and swarmed under there. Jermaine Phillips with a tremendous play on special teams. Now 242 to go in the game. Monday night countdown at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The best place to get ready for Monday night football. Then on ABC at 9, the Monday night game with Curtis Martin and the Jets against Jerry Rice and the Raiders. Yeah, but you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss Monday night countdown because the Boomer will be in charge. And the Raiders have an opportunity to open up some space between them and everybody else in that division. Boy, wouldn't they ever. With San Diego beating Denver today. Denver's got to hate kicking the kicking game. Field goals have killed them. In Jake, three of the five losses. Jake DeLome is in at quarterback for the injured Aaron Brooks out of Louisiana Lafayette in his fourth year. Jim Haslett told us last year he could start for a lot of teams, but his job right now is to hand it off to Deuce McAllister. Deuce hit by Lynch and then gang tackled. Still got four. Tampa Bay uses its last timeout. They have the two-minute warning available. And if they hold them on downs, they could get the ball back with a minute to go. Hey, I'm going out. All right. Okay. Wow. I mean, she keeps tabs on me 24-7. But now my brother's age and old enough to do stuff like smoke pot, will she even be paying attention? Hey, just because you can walk doesn't mean you don't want your mom and dad to ask you where you're going. Whose parents are going to be there? Jesse. Did you leave the number? Yes. Fine. She cares. Hey, can a baby get some attention around here? Talk. No. Ask. Parents. The anti-drug. 23-20, the Saints over the Buccaneers. 2.35 to go in the ballgame. Mike Patrick, Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Culver, our entire ESPN crew with you from the Superdome. John Gruden obviously upset on the sideline. All of Jake DeLone's college players he played with are saying, don't listen to the coach, throw it deep. <laughs> I, you know what? I think Mike McCarthy has to throw the football here, the offensive coordinator. I think Jim Haslett. Not on this play. Yeah, I think you throw it here. Oh, you, you save you don't 35 down, seconds you, if you do. You want to go down to two minutes? You don't want to go down here? I don't want to. I don't, Let me move over here by Mike I just again. don't want to concede the fact that we're just going to run it three times and allow you to stop me. I'll be shocked if they don't. McAllister, that in the backfield. Al Sherman Singleton makes the tackle. I think that was the down that you could have thrown something safe, keep the clock going, get a completion, and because they're packed in anyway. They'll let it run down to two minutes. Then they'll have third down and the ability to punt, so maybe 1-105-110. One, one if they don't get a first down, the Buccaneers would get the ball back. I'm not talking to him anymore for right now. I just want to ask you a question. How long has it been since, <laughs> since Jake has thrown the ball in, in a regular game? Uh, Jake is 0 for 1 this year. Okay, thank you very much. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> I have an apology to make for knitting you a present rather than buying something you'd enjoy. I thought each present was a little piece of me, a person who, I'm now told, isn't very good at knitting. I'm sorry. This year, I'm shopping at Staples. You should, too. They have the exciting technology gifts everyone wants. And this month, you can get free delivery from Staples.com. But you can't get a macrame mouse pad. Holiday shopping done at Staples. Gina? You know, when I was first hired, we didn't have all these fancy integrated systems. Our sales program wasn't even linked with accounting. Warehouse platform in Chicago wasn't linked to anything, not even shipping. Back then, orders took days. Now, they just take hours. Wow, how long have you been working here? A couple of months now. Oh, 
With Microsoft Server Software, you can quickly connect all aspects of your business. That's software for the agile business. From Microsoft. Please support military families this holiday season by logging on to NFL.com, VFW, and donating to Operation Uplink. This year, give to someone who gives you the gift of freedom every day. Stuart Scott and Linda Cone standing by with Sports Center. Hi, Linda. The champs are there. We may not get to you for a while, folks. It's 23-20, two minutes to go. The Bucks are out of timeouts. And the Saints are out of a quarterback. The Bucks, number one in the league on third down defense, but they have been hit eight out of 16 times tonight. The Saints get a first down. The game is over. DeLome to throw. He's got a first down. <laughs> Holy cow, are you kidding? I'll tell you, stay over there. You don't like you don't like my calls, huh? I like that call. Oh, Joe no. Warren <laughs> runs a slant, and DeLome hit him on the numbers. Oh, didn't we see this last week with Mike Shanahan? No, we no, did, no. But it was incomplete. When Steve Berline tried to hit Ed McCaffrey. <laughs> it was incomplete. This was not incomplete. Oh, Greg Spires tries to swat this down. What a throw. There goes big play Joe Horn. Boy, you, when he was sitting in the office, we talked to him on Friday. He was really down and dejected. Now he's just down with the first down. And now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can't do anything but watch. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen after this game. When we talked to Warren Sapp before this game, he said the first game they beat us. They beat us. He's going to say the same thing tonight. Yes, he will. And not, not, not trying to be funny about it. He's just going to say, hey, they were better than we were. They took it to us. They beat us. He's this very is... honest about his assessments of yes, where his is. team is. I think that this was a wake-up call for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They came into this game with a lot of confidence and a swagger. They were 9-2. and two. They'd beaten the Green Bay Packers last week in a very physical game. They come into New Orleans, who has lost their last two. Their confidence is shattered a little bit, or last week. Next week, now they've got to play the Atlanta Falcons, and here is the NFC playoff picture. Tampa Bay still in first place at 9-3, and three, one of three teams at 9-3, and three, but Atlanta right behind at 8-3-1, and one, and New Orleans stays alive as they win a huge game to get to 8-4 and four in spite of the injury to Aaron Brooks, in spite of the fact that their all-star running back Deuce McAllister had to play all game with a bad ankle. A huge win for New Orleans. And they may wind up with Jake DeLome as their quarterback next week, depending upon how Aaron Brooks bicep feels. Well, he was one for one tonight, and it was a huge one. Our final score, the Saints 23, the Bucks 20. For Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Colbert, and our entire crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from the Superdome. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN, thank you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.